Welcome or welcome back to the iFox and Juice podcast. I'm your host, Juice, and I'm here with my co-host, the wet-ass pussy to my conservative outrage, Reen. <laughs> wap, wap, wap. <laughs> Why are people fucking tripping about that? I don't understand. We can't talk about our own wet pussies. <laughs> our well, wet-ass pussies, I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah, you being a female, and that, that doesn't just doesn't include me. Yeah, <laughs> I forgot who tweeted what. Oh no, it was uh, Uncle Bobby. What did he say? We ate pizza. Wap means we ate pizza. <laughs> <laughs> and then that, and then that other dude, the ninja one. Oh uh, yeah, ninja, Nate, Nate's ninja skills. Yes, and he said, "Wap, <laughs> wireless access point." I was cracking up. I was dying. That the dumbest tweets. Dirty. Yeah, dumbest tweets ever. And I'm like laughing my ass off. Wireless <laughs> access point WAP. <laughs> That's a Silicon Valley shit right there. Too much, That's man. Shit. People in fucking, yeah, people in the Bay Area were cracking up with that one. Yeah, so they're tripping about talking about wet ass pussies. And then I guess Kylie Jenner was in the video. So there's controversy because of that and there was like a petition to have her removed from the video <laughs> ben shapiro uh, i didn't see the entire you know episode. Oh, i saw it i saw it His, yeah like he sounds like he clip. was did, okay so what happened there because i didn't see the whole thing well I, I mean i didn't see the whole thing as far as like i don't watch his show but i saw the clip him talking about it. he was just saying like this is the vulgar ass song. This is repugnant. This is this is the future that future that liberals want. This is what feminists want. This is what's gonna be like. You know, it was basically just like fear mongering. Like you're gonna hear about nothing but women and their p words if you have let them. You know, have power and shit. Oh my god! I bet he was fun at parties, man. I mean, he didn't say that outright, but that's basically what he was insinuating. Like, DJ, is this the world you want to grow? You know, you want your kids to grow up in and shit. Oh my God! Your wife must have a dry ass pussy. <laughs> you don't know what's up. You wouldn't even be talking about this if you had it right. <laughs> you appreciate it. Well, on the Ben Shapiro front, this is a man who was very proud of the fact that he lost his virginity on his wedding night uh, along with his wife. So, yeah, he's he's actually gone in public and said that, which is like, okay, dude, you could do that, but don't say that in public. This is the weirdest thing to me. That it's like a thing now to like, oh, don't make fun of virgins. I don't know. Maybe I'm too old school. Maybe it's just because that's the shit that was happening when I was in high school. But I never thought that really went out of fashion. Oh, my God. So did he lose his virginity through his dick hole? <laughs> <laughs> like the Chappelle skit? Yes. Probably. I wouldn't be surprised. He still, he still had his clothes on. No. <laughs> oh. Wow. I'm in tears, bro. This is a crazy opening. Welcome, people. Again, always with the doom and gloom. So th this is just—it was just funny. <laughs> that look, I'm a guy too. That I don't—I see something trending, especially if it's Cardi B or Nicki Minaj or any popular artist that I don't really listen to. Like, oh, she has a good, she has a new song out, or there's a like a, a meme about. It. Like, I usually, I, I, I don't care. I'll, I'll get to it eventually. I'm gonna listen to it whether I want to or not. This is the first time in a very, very long time where I actually saw the video just because of what people were talking about. And this conservative outrage just drew me in. I'm like, how bad can it be? And then, yeah, seeing like the, the Kylie Jenner stuff and all that, I'm like, wait, she's in this? I'm like, wait, does that mean she's rapping or singing or what? And then I see the video and she's like in it for like 10 seconds. I'm like, wait, what did she do? She walked down a hall. And she had more clothes on than Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion. So... What what's the deal here? What because she's like the only white woman in here? What the fuck's the deal? Like I don't get it. I don't get it either. I don't know if it's because of Kanye trying to sabotage the election or people are pissed off at that or I, I don't get it. I don't know. I thought Kylie was in. She's she's this the darling now. She's more popular than Kim Kardashian. Oh for sure. Yeah, she's taking the throne really. 
Yeah, so I don't get it, man. People are outraged. I'm like, what? You haven't heard like gangster rap? You haven't heard like any of the lyrics for the past, I don't know. I guess 30 years? Was, I guess because this was in reverse that it's women. It's like it's not rappers degrading women, it's women quote unquote degrading themselves. You know what I mean? Like, so I think that's what which is funny because if you listen to especially Cardi B and Nicki Minaj, they talk about shit like that all the time, but I mean, fuck, Lil' Kim was, what, 20, 25 years ago? God, yeah. She, she originated the original. This shit, you know? Like, yep. Her, Foxy Brown, back in the day. Mm-hmm. Damn, yep. that's a that's a flash in the past. Yeah. Whew, oh. Foxy Brown. Damn. I see her face right now in that video. <laughs> that was back in what? It wasn't even 2000, 99? Yeah, it was like late 90s, yeah, mid to late 90s. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah, it's just it's just wild that I'm 30 years old. I grew up with this stuff on TV of like the outrage over rap and certain bands and Marilyn Manson and all this type of shit. I'm like, okay, I'm a grown ass adult now. People are those people that were outraged are either dead or too old to care, and people my age aren't gonna make a big deal about it. But no, Ben Shapiro's like not that much older than me, and he's fucking crying about this shit while there's people dying and people going homeless out in the fucking streets right now. And I was like, of all the times, like we're, we're experiencing all this crazy shit. You think this would be the one time where this wouldn't really be a story. The only thing that should have made news is that, yeah, Cardi B is a popular singer. So she had a new single. Okay. People are going to talk about it, but I didn't think it was going to be all this. Oh my God. What about the children? All this pearl clutching <laughs> and earmuffs God. of the children. Like what the fuck dude? Like, I did not think I would still be having this conversation at my age in this year. Yeah, it's pretty fucking crazy. And it, it made me think, like, I wonder what Ben would think of me. Because I oh I have God. a mouth on me. Well, but it's there's... interesting because you're a parent. Yeah, I'm a parent. I have a mouth on me. But I also have a corporate side. But I also have a mom side. I can balance it all. <laughs> I can get my shit together. I got my shit together. I think I'm a little bit better than him. He's smarter than me. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. But I, I train. I'm kind of retired right now. I'm very independent. What would he say about me? Because <laughs> well, uh, you sound like a pussy, Ben, com- in comparison <laughs> to me. Well, you are a brown immigrant, so I don't know. That's oh, yeah, probably true. You're probably off on the wrong foot there <laughs> with him anyway. I keep forgetting the color my skin <laughs> even though i got white too yeah <laughs> but, but you can't tell though and you're I know, right? like, white people, so they just think you're you know you're a brown <laughs> supremacist or something i'm an equal opportunity hater and that's as we've, we've talked a lot about <laughs> off air that's kind of our new slogan now that's, that's the unofficial slogan of the podcast yeah so for those who've you know stuck around and hopped on and listened to us. I appreciate you guys, especially those that have been, uh, you know, giving us shout outs on Twitter. I see you guys. I've been liking them. I think it's like Serious King. He uh, he posted something like a couple days ago. He gave us a shout out too. So appreciate you guys still sticking around with our vulgar mouths. Immigrant yeah. mouths. <laughs> Sorry. No, thank you for that. I was actually very surprised by that, too. I, yeah, I noticed that, too. Uh, Ash giving us shout-outs. I know she's a fan of the show and has been on, but, yeah, she gave us a shout-out. I decided to reply to one of her uh, weekly questions about her podcast, and apparently we both got some wanted-slash-unwanted attention because I made a – I I asked a question about Corey Anderson's nipples, and for some reason he got a hold of it and subtweeted it and actually laughed about it. So – we possibly got a tiny bit more famous this week as well as Ash. So that was fucking odd. But I think we've come full circle when we can actually make fun of fighters and they're actually liking it. Maybe we got to keep doing what we're doing. I know, all right? This is our <laughs> space. And I appreciate <laughs> the underground people that are following us because I feel like we are kind of underground because we've been around the block. We've done so much. And I don't think a lot of people know that we've done so much. We can be professionals, but this is our space, and we choose not to do that. Because we were there. We've seen it. We didn't like the bullshit. We got out, and now we're doing our own thing. I, I mean, you've done way more than me. I think that's an 
age and experience thing. You know, I've, I've, I've done a lot of what I wanted and I'm not, and I'm not done either. You know, there's still things I want to do. I'm by no means done with this space, but this kind of just came about as two people with similar interests starting to talk shit on a weekly basis that, you know, I don't know how much of friends we were when this shit started rain, but I think week by week doing this shit, we we're like family now, you know, it's yeah. fucking odd. <laughs> all this shit talking and just, yep. yeah. DM combos and all this, like now oh, we're shit, like man. homies for life. <laughs> yep. We are dude. You know, my, deepest darkest secrets and i know yours <laughs> oh yeah oh this shit can go nuclear at any second but yeah man no nah, i i trust you with my life i really do rain and uh yeah it's it's just interesting that this much i guess what people would call toxicity or negativity actually made this bond you know <laughs> yeah seriously like we have a strong bond like y'all don't know like y'all could hear or yeah, if you guys can listen to our lost tapes or either like go through our DMs. <laughs> oh, the world of blow. Well, well, the Twitter world of blow. Up. Nothing would happen to the yeah. real world. Heads, real world. heads will explode like fucking Chappelle show and shit. But that's how we are. That's, I mean, that's how in tune we are with each other. Like, we were like always constantly going back and forth with anything. It could be about politics, it could be about just family life, and of course, fighting, like all kinds of shit. Just behind the scenes, we're talking shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> I, I will say this, and I'll end it with this, because I know we're kind of oh. getting in a little circle jerk right now, and I'm sorry about that. <laughs> but what I ass will- pussy, man? What ass pussy? <laughs> <laughs> if you're offended by that, I'm sorry, but hey, man, I'm not going to change. <laughs> okay. I will say this, too, that not to get too personal, but we kind of did go through some dark times. There's a reason why we didn't do a, a show for like a month. And we kind of mutually just decided to do something about it by not doing something about it. And somehow by hook or by crook, it turned out to be the right thing. And we're back and we're motivated and we're just trying to live life as much as we can, even in this scary ass time. And to be honest, Shane, I don't know what I would have done without you. Cause it's lonely about this bitch, you know? And Shit, even with family and stuff, it's like, that's kind of the only connection we have. So doing this shit helps tremendously. You have no idea. Yeah, no, same, man. We're on the same page. Like, this is like therapy. So yeah. y'all are y'all are actually in our therapy sessions. You guys yeah. are all involved with this. So thank you and very it, much. And it's way cheaper. And at least you guys get some <laughs> entertainment out of it, too. So right? it's a win-win, I guess. Well, at least I hope you enjoy it for the most part. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm not seriously, man. I'm surprised we have listeners, and yeah, it just really touches me that you know people are giving a shout out. Thank you for that. That that's the way to go, and I think that's the way to uh, end this intro. So let's go on. Let's go on about our business and talk MMA. This is what the people are here for. So let's just jump right into it because we got a rewind, we got a preview, we got plenty of headlines, we got plenty of matchups. Interesting week in MMA, and we got our news story of the week. So let's just jump in with the rewind of the Las Vegas card. And first up, well, we got to make a mention. We didn't uh, cover this on last week's show, but Benil Dariush, man, there's been so many crazy knockouts this year. I want to call it knockout of the year and most years it would be, but he failed to, he he didn't make weight, which really sucks because Dariush is a professional. I think this is the first for him. But man, as far as the knockout goes, it was beautiful. Spinning back this to uh, Scott Holtzman, who's not a bad fighter at all. And Dariush fucking took it to him, man. That was so brutal. That was so nasty. And I think, was it Strapoli? He was throwing all kinds of spinning crap. Man, he was making me dizzy. But Benil, this one, god damn, he landed that one and just knocked him out. That was so brutal. Did he look bigger because he didn't miss weight or no? You don't think he did? I don't know. I couldn't tell. I, Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things like it was by a lot, but it wasn't. It was what, two or three two, pounds? Yeah, two pounds. And I'm like, did, does he look bigger? I wasn't sure. 
The thing is, Dariush is not Anthony Johnson. He just looks like a normal dude. He's one of those guys that's stereotypical. The last guy you want to fuck with at the bar because I think he's an accountant or something, but he'll fucking choke your ass out. Yeah, and now right. he'll knock your ass out. Yeah. Well, I wonder. Yeah, because he didn't have to cut that much weight and have a lot of power to generate and throw that spinning fucking nuclear explosion. I, I'm trying to Whatever think. You call it. I'm <laughs> trying to brutal. think if he's ever thrown that. Just even like as a throwaway, just like ah, fuck it, I'll throw it to see if it lands. I, I, I I can't recall. I'm like trying to go through it as I as I was kind of trying to describe it. Like I can't recall a time he's ever looked so vicious like that. That that legitimately might have, might have been at least in a real fight. That might have been the first time that he threw that. And if it was, he fucking landed it perfectly. Yeah, like crazy man. Well. Yeah, too bad. I mean, he wasn't going to get a, a bonus anyways, but... Even the I, way he handled that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. He told me that because I didn't even see that part. Yeah, I, um, he missed weight, and obviously that means that he's not eligible for a, a bonus, a performance of the night or anything like that. And he said, you know, I'm sorry for missing weight, and, and um, I know I'd probably be in contention if I did, so I'd if you're going to give me a bonus or you thought about giving me a bonus, I'd rather have you give it to my opponent. She's like, man, it is like the same thing with Francisco Trinaldo a few weeks back when he knocked out Jai Herbert. Like the fact that he didn't try to murder him, even though he landed this fucking bomb on him and had to make Herb Dean look bad because it's like, fuck, I know when this fight's over, man. Like him blowing weight, it was like it almost didn't matter because of what a gentleman he was. And the same thing with uh, Dariush. It's like, man, if you're going to blow weight, that's one way to handle it. Nuts, man. I guess it's his wife. I think it's his wife. He better uh, take care of his woman because she's probably doing a lot of work holding pads for him. So, But, Reen, you know, like, Latori holds pads for, for Mike Perry. Oh How hard can God. it be? Oh, my God. You're telling me she's really doing anything? Come on. Yes, she's really <laughs> holding pads. <laughs> no, that, that chick. I wonder what's going on. Oh, and are we ever going to see Platinum Princess talk about her ordeal? Didn't she mention something like that, that she spoke to somebody or was that from a fake account? Yeah, there was something she's like, if this is her, it was like, fuck you, Mike Perry, for hitting me and cheating on me. But that's all right, because I fucked your dad and that little midget underage bitch Latori ain't shit. She ain't on my level or something like that. But it was on Twitter, which I don't think I've ever seen her on there. I've seen her on Instagram. So it very well could have been a fake account. And I haven't followed it since, so I don't know if that's legit or not. But if that is true, Jesus Christ, fucking <laughs> player hater of the week for sure, right? <laughs> I guess. I would have, but I can't say it's legit. So, yeah. You know. But it was a great tweet. <laughs> Fuck, man. It was nuclear, full nuclear on both of them. Mm-hmm. At that point, I don't know. Do you need it? I mean, I'm not going to say don't talk about your, your story, but just kind of murdered him, man. He kind of did. Yeah. When he's trying to change, he's going to have a baby. I was thinking about that earlier. I'm like, why didn't she just hold off and play her, you know, play her cards right? Like that poor baby. I was feeling bad, man. I don't know wait, why his, his, why Mike Perry came up. Wait, but... what do you mean? Because she's pregnant. That laboratory chick. And I was like... Why get pregnant now? Just like Shiga said, don't get, you know, don't have a baby. Not at this age. Get everything done. You do remember she's Mexican, right, Reem? Oh, God. <laughs> I'll say it so you don't I have to. I keep forgetting because her name throws There's me no off. Way. And then and then her face, I think she got a nose job done. So, and then I can't really tell in the face, like, what she is. and throws me off. She's from Texas. Mexicans do look a little bit different there for some reason, especially when they're young. <laughs> I don't know. I'll I'll leave I'll leave that there because everyone in the community knows, in the Hispanic community knows, Texan Mexicans are totally on their own shit. It's odd. They eat differently. They talk differently. Different politics. It's fucking odd. Huh? Yeah. Anyway, yeah. They like tassels and shit. Like, <laughs> that's just women in Texas. Though. I've seen wh white women, black women, <laughs> Selena. They love tassels, man. Cowboy boots and hats and tassels. It's odd. It's kind of hot, though. I'm not going to lie. But anyway, that's enough of my weird fetishes. <laughs> that was just talking about Darius, a guy we didn't even cover last week. So let's get to the fights that we did cover. <laughs> that, was, that was long. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be a long one, as you guys, big surprise, like you guys didn't already know. Uh, Nasrat Hafkaras was a, a 
Nazar Havkaras and Alex Munoz was the first fight we covered. And man, did this dude put a fucking whooping on, on Munoz. I picked Munoz last week. You went for Havkaras. And boy, yeah. was I wrong. Yeah, man. Because I thought it would be just way too soon for this kid. And he was just getting pieced up. And he was asking for it. He's like, come on, come on, come on. Like, yeah, I get it, dude. You're trying to be brave and try to act like it don't hurt. But you can see it in your face. Well, he, I think he did take this on late notice, right? Because, I mean, he never won. and Well, he won the, the Contender Series fight, but Dana never picked him. He he took a fight after that, like on the regional circuit and a few months ago. And now he's here. So quarantine and stuff, they try to get a lot of local fighters because obviously they're missing international fighters. Yeah, so it's one of those, you know, rush deals, and look what happened. He's under Uriah, so he'll be fine. That, yeah, I've never seen, like, I thought Andre Feely was going to be that guy where he was going to be kind of a bust, where because, you know, he would win one, lose one, win one, lose one, and I'm like, this is just going to be him. Like, he's just going to be like an action fighter, like a journeyman. And now he's looking pretty badass. It just took him longer than usual. You know, they tend to be pretty decent fighters even if they're not champions. So, yeah, I think you're right. I think he'll be good. But I don't know. The way that Hopcross fought, he looked like a man possessed. I'm like, I don't think anybody was beating him that night. I'm not trying to say this to excuse Munoz. Obviously, he was the better fighter, but he just looked like a different animal. And remember, he just got knocked out like eight months ago. So maybe he's just been training like a demon. He looks so scary. Those shots sounded so bad. Yeah. Oh my God! And he just kept nailing him. It was amazing. No, he and he didn't even kick at all. I think maybe one time he kicked him, but it was all hands, and he was just in his face. He didn't care. And I mean, Hopcross is a pretty well-rounded fighter, but obviously we knew Munoz's strength was going to be his wrestling. I kind of feel that although Hopcross is well-rounded, that standing that would kind of be his uh his strong suit. And Munoz would neutralize it with his wrestling, with either with clinching or wrestling, and he just couldn't do shit. And he just yeah, made him look like an amateur, man. It was it was wild. So I guess with that, what do you think? I mean, Munoz is obviously gonna stay around. I don't think I don't think they're gonna cut him or not give him a second fight, but I don't know. You think this Hafkaras getting back on the contender wagon, or you think he's gonna like fight a few more dudes in that just these random quarantine fights where you take whatever fight comes your way and Hope for the best type thing. Yeah. Hope for the best. Just take whatever fight, especially right now, if he's like on a high right now, definitely just take whatever fight you can. Like you said, like he looked like he was a man possessed. So keep going, man. He didn't really take a lot of damage, but also it was a three round fight. So his Mm -hmm. body, a bit taxing, I'm sure. So yeah, maybe, maybe a bit of a break right now, right? Yeah, a little bit, because he was on a long one, right? How long was he out for? Yeah, like seven months. I think he got knocked out in January. But that was a pretty bad knockout. That's one of those, like, you should yeah. take time off. So the quarantine may have been a blessing in disguise, because if it didn't happen, he probably would have fought, like, in May or something. True that. Yeah. They, yeah. Automatic but, six-month suspension anyways. Yeah, but the, the, I don't know. It seems like they never listen to those. The fighters don't listen to those, and the commission's like, ah, whatever, close enough. Yeah, they're always back in the gym. Well, in this case, I don't know if he got right back in the gym. Because it was during that time where he would have been able to go back for a little bit, like conditioning and things like that, I think. Because that would have like a March time frame. And then I think, I know he fight. he lives in Germany, but I don't know what his situation has been. You know what I mean? The travel-wise, if he'd been staying in Germany this whole time. Because, I mean, they got hit kind of hard too, obviously not like the States. But I, I don't know where he trains here. Why do I think he trains with Hooft? Is it Kings? It's not Kings, right? No, that's Kelvin. Oh, I know it's Kelvin, but I thought they like worked out together every now and then, or no? I, I don't know. I, I forget who his gym was, but I, I know he's from Germany. He's he's an odd one because he, he's Afghani, but lives in Germany, but um, speaks pretty good English. So I don't know. I was like, okay. And then he looks like Kelvin Gastelum, so of course, I can get him confused. But, uh, <laughs> I don't really see it. Really? Not oh, I'm like, no, that's wow. Kelvin. Kelvin got a bigger head. <laughs> oh, he's at TriStar. Is he still at TriStar? Mm, well, that's the thing. People sometimes with TriStar, people go for like one camp and then bail. Or 
I, I don't know how much I don't know if the hobby's too expensive or just living in Montreal or training in Montreal is an issue. Because like I remember Kevin Lee went with them, uh, but I don't know if he he came back the next fight. I'm trying to remember. It's it's weird. And then JoJo JoJo was there for a while too, for like a fight or two. And then it was too expensive, so she was like begging for a bonus. And then started training. I think at at a syndicate after that. So yeah, I don't know what's up with TriStar. Yeah, maybe it's cost. I don't know. Maybe with Americans, they maybe have a record or something. They only have like a temporary visa. I don't know. Because, <laughs> I mean, even if you have like a little DUI, you can't get in, right? It's very hard to get in. Yeah, there's always that, the immigration immigration issue, right? Yeah. So, I don't yeah. know, man. Yeah. Well, regardless of all that, Hopcross did very good, very well. And, uh, yeah, Munoz, I think, will be back. So, I think we agree there. We'll see what happens because nothing certain in this t- day and age so that was that fight next fight was tim means and loriano staropoli you made a mention earlier about staropoli spinning shit and uh it really was spinning shit it wasn't the t- typical nick diaz we throw <laughs> spinning shit now because he was just throwing and throwing not landing shit god every fucking move was that and he he gassed out by the second round he had two minutes left in the second round, I believe. He had already gassed out. And that was what I mentioned, right? Like, he's going to probably gas out. He's going to get pieced up, and he's going to gas out early. And this is going to go the distance, because who has a gas tank here? Means. Yeah, you're giving Means, like, the veteran edge, right? You thought, like, his veteran craft would would outdo him, right? Mm-hmm. Because he, this kid is just, just out of control sometimes. And, yeah, this... This was a wild fight to me. Like, it's not working. None of your spinning shit is working. What are you going to stop doing this? <laughs> Ultimately, it's like, oh, I'm done. I'm gassed out. Like, what the fuck? Well, you got to remember, too, that he missed weight by, like, a lot, too. I think by, like, four pounds or so. Yeah, and he looked big. He did. Yeah, he definitely he looked. looked and I think he may have been injured. Obviously, he could have just been fucking around. But even then, if you don't make weight, it usually shows that you're probably not 100%. So maybe that's why he was going for the spinning shit. Like, I got to take him out because I'm not going to make it. I think he knew, like, that was his strategy. Like, I'm not going to make it, so get at him early. Damn. Well, that didn't work out. Mm-hmm. Tim Means, he's going to probably take over that spot that Glover has soon. You know? Oh! But is the he a dad? dad Isn't he a dad? I don't know. I thought he's married with the well, he's that old dude, so there's that. But he's 36, you know. I mean, if he keeps going like this, yeah, he's probably your, be- your range, huh? yeah, he's getting in my range, bro. <laughs> well, how, how old is James Krause? Like, I mean, I know he's not that old, but I know he's not that young either. I know you he he's the same age, like 36. He was around in that, that, I think, that live season of The Ultimate Fighter. That was, like, 2012. And I think he'd been fighting a good while before then, too. So, yeah, he's probably been fighting, like, 10 years. That probably makes sense. Where's he been? Like, now he's not taking any short-notice fights. He's 34. So that's that's the youngin' for you. Yeah, he's too young. <laughs> oh, yeah, I Irene. Mean, yeah, too too young for you. That's a, that's a new one for you. <laughs> I say this with total respect, being with someone who's 20 years older than me. All respect in the world for you, girl. Yeah, I, it, we talk, we start the show with wet ass pussy, and of course, this is what it's devolving to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. But yeah, to me, it's just crazy, man. That I don't even want to mention that break again, but it's just, it's just, it's always gonna be in my head that nasty break that he had. But ever since then, he's just been on you know, a terror again, like, well, he had you know, win loss. one, fight one. Yeah. Win one, yeah. lose one, but he's still around. Yeah. He's, <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's, you know, people would compare him to like Matt Brown and Carlos Condit and stuff. And I think they're all of a similar age, but yeah, look where means is that, as opposed to them, obviously Brown and Condit were at a higher level, but he's still doing the damn thing, which kind of, because he brought up his age and his performances as of late, that's kind of what I'm wondering is how much more he's got left. I know, right? Because I thought it would be the end of it once he got hurt like that. Like, he that nasty break. Like, I thought it would be done and over with. And then he did get kicked once, and I'm like, ooh, 
I'm like, oh my god, I wonder if he like has still has it in his head. He, yeah. legi- he he legitimately could have gotten nerve damage. I mean, he very well very well could have it now and just put a poker face on, you know? Or not feel anything at all. That'd be dope. <laughs> they don't feel any pain at all. You're like, fuck it. Just like kid me, man. Brain or some shit. No. Yeah. I think Tim Means is one of these guys. I don't know why people don't like him don't realize what kind of position they're in. Like Nate Diaz and Cowboy are the only ones that kind of figured it out. And Nate Diaz, both of them kind of did it on accident. Nate Diaz obviously beat Connor, and that was his claim to fame. Cowboy just through ubiquity, just being around all the time, always forever, became kind of a household name. But instead of trying to be a champion, instead of trying to chase these, like just take on fights that are fun. That's the reason why Nate, you know, of course, beating Connor was huge, but that's why that fight with Showtime and and Masvidal were dope because, like, hey, this is gonna be a fun fight. We don't have to worry about him getting taken down and it just being boring because obviously they don't indulge in that kind of fight. Like, just fight against guys that either you could win against or just have a fun fight against. I think Tim Means should go the same way. Obviously, he's not going to reach the star potential of those guys, but get fights that people want to see and get more money in your pocket. Yeah, for sure. I mean, he's like he's like Jim Miller, man. They just just won't go away. Not yet. It's a pretty good comparison. And we'll be talking about Jim in a while, too, because he's fighting this weekend. So let's move on to the next fight. Their fight we covered. Uh, Yana Kunitskaya versus Julia Stoliarenko. Man, this was poss- I don't know. There was some duds on this card, and this was probably the maybe- worst. <laughs> maybe not the worst, but probably the second worst. the The next fight we'll talk about was probably the worst to me. But, dude, what? I don't know. I mean, I've seen Yana's done this. I think twice now. She did this with well, she lost to Aspen, but I think she did this with she fought someone on the McGregor card. Was it Felice Herrig? No, no, that's a different weight class. Who was it? She fought someone, and she was just doing the same thing, just like foot stomps and and just uh, clinching. And this is like kind of new for her because she was an Invicta. She was fun. She was like kind of a wild striker and had decent wrestling and grappling and stuff. And I don't know what got into her lately of just like clinch and do the minimal effort. I was kind of pissed, man, because at the end, she was starting to show what she had. And I'm like, why couldn't we see this beforehand? I mean, I, I want to say, trying to, I guess in her defense, like, okay, she just lost to Aspen, and then who knows what happened to her over the summer, as we've talked about. Um, maybe she just wanted to win, so she took the path of Leafs resistance, which I'm not mad at her for, but it's just it's just odd that she's been taking this approach. Maybe if it ain't broke, don't fix it, but obviously with Aspen, it came back to bite her in the ass, so... I don't know. I, I'm not gonna say be exciting for for my entertainment, but it's just it's not it's not the way she used to fight before. She was a champion in Invicta, and she didn't win the belt looking like this. Yeah, such a boring fight. I try to keep my eyes on it, but it's just the same thing every fucking round, except for the the, the ending of the third. Yeah, and that was it. That was the most exciting and that yeah, was the so- piece that we had. And Stolia Renko is an exciting fighter, too, and couldn't do much about it. Although I think she is a last-minute replacement, too. So it's hard to be hard on Julia because how much could she have done? But yeah, it was just, it was just a weird performance by Yana. I, I hope she gets out of this. I, I want her to be more exciting again, but I'm not her fucking coach, and she's got to make her money, so what do I know, you know? Yeah, yeah she's just going to be that girl that's just there. And With performance? Yeah. With performances like this, yeah. Yeah, and possibly just be like a stepping stone. Cause she, yeah, because she was a former, you know, she was a champion in a, a, a different promotion. Probably use that. And then also, you know, she's dating, you know, Santos, and they did mention that as well. So, have you have you considered the fact that maybe Santos has made her this way? I don't know, man. I mean, they're training an awful lot, and he's he was in this. You know, in her corner. So I don't know, man. You might you might have to have a talk with him. <laughs> I don't think you're down with this, Rain. I'm not, man. <laughs> I 
I thought I was expected more. That's why I was, I think, partially disappointed. I expected more because of him and their, you know, their training together. But you might be right. Maybe she was just playing it safe because she is in that spot where she could possibly get let go. Yeah, maybe put down the hammer, Tiago, and teach her some spinning wheel kicks and shit. Yeah. You're, you're good at them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she did have a rough go with the UFC. I mean, her first opponent, wasn't it? Yeah, it was Chris. Chris was her first opponent. Yeah, I mean, welcome to the UFC, right? Yep, so she's she didn't have, like, I'm not going to say an easy path. <laughs> you know, she didn't have a normal path. Yeah, I, I will give credence to that. Like, I mean, even KGB said that her, because her first couple of fights in the UFC were kind of like, even she said they were kind of like, meh. Like, uh, yeah, like I know people probably expect it more, but when you're in the UFC, you don't want to get cut. So my first couple of fights, I was just like, do what you can to win, but don't go too crazy. So maybe she's still on that path. Again, maybe she'll get out of it, or maybe this is just, she'll do this until she can anymore. Well, only time will tell, you know? Yeah, but speaking of boring fights, I think this may have been the worst one. Chris Weidman wins a split decision, right? Against Omar Ekmedov. Yeah, see, I I totally forgot about this one. It wasn't oh, memorable at all. There was nothing. Yeah, there was nothing. It, and you think even with Weidman, he's been getting knocked out a lot. You think there was like a close call, like shit. He he got dropped. He got rocked. He was never in real danger, but he never looked good. Like even though no. it was kind of obvious he was winning. It was yeah. still some questions like you should win, but you've done you haven't done enough to take away all the doubt, you know? I mean, I even watched a partial interview with him and Helwani talking about his win and I still forgot about it. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing, Chris? <laughs> Why are you fighting? Oh my god. And is this gonna give him confidence to possibly like fight top contenders? He said he's still that's still his goal. Hit man. I know that well, God. I know I know she's not married anymore, but I know he's married and has like 18 kids and shit, but him and Holly need to have kids together, man, because they're just they're just on that path. But that's the thing, is like Chris actually has to earn his way back right now. <laughs> Holly's been on a similar trajectory, but she's like right there. Chris is like, no, here's where the merit comes in. You gotta win some fights. <laughs> I know, right? Because when this showed up, I was like, do they hate Chris? What are they doing? Like, why are they giving this dude to Chris? But he won. I mean, I thought, I think we both thought he was going to get knocked out, right? So props yeah. to him. I mean, he he didn't really take a lot of damage, but he looked so rough. He looked so sluggish. Physically, his his, uh, his reflexes, his IQ. Like, I mean, his wrestling looked pretty good the first round or two. And then after that, it was just like, yeah, just kind of. <laughs> Just kind of winging it. Yeah, he still had the wrestling because I thought Omari would be the one taking him down. I'm like, he's gonna, Chris is gonna take him down. I'm like, I don't think so. No, they were equally bad. And then now they're talking about a rematch: Luke Rockhold and oh. Chris Weidman. Well, we're gonna we're gonna talk about that later because Luke is he opened he's been quiet and now he opened his mouth and oh we're gonna we're gonna dive deep in there because he oh god yeah yeah because when Luke opens his mouth. It's time for everybody to listen. Is he not Clearly. modeling? Is he, is he not being pretty somewhere and keeping his mouth shut? The, all the people he works with probably know and think that he's a whore. So it's like, we're not going near that fucker. He's going to give us COVID and shit. <laughs> and AIDS and herpes. Oh, God. He's such it's a the, dog. It's a bad kind of compliment, Luke. You'll get way more pussy than I ever could, but you're still a dirty fucker. Yes. I have no proof of this, but I'm sure you are. Yes. And Valerie Lareda still <laughs> fucking denied you. <laughs> it's true. Oh, that was wild. Yeah, that was like some player hater of the year type shit. That was roast to the next level. That was that was painful. Yeah. That was painful. It was beautiful. <laughs> I know what. <laughs> He's hurt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, speaking of Valerie, I told you to watch some stuff before we started, did you? Oh, shit, I forgot to. Oh, my God. So, yeah, I'll, I'll recap it for you. So, I guess the news today was that she signed an extension with Bellator, a multi-fight, bigger payday type thing. I'm a big surprise. She, we started the show last week talking about her knockout, so I'm not surprised she got an extension. And, of course, she had to do some kind of weird dance with 
front kicks and shadow boxing and ass shaking. So that's that. And I, that's kind of what I felt. I'm like, dude, she wins this fight. She's going to go all in on this. And I think uh, uh, yesterday or a few days ago, she made a video of, of oh, this my last opponent was saying I'm just an IG model and this and that. And this is what happened to her. And they showed the knockout and then showed her doing her little dance post KO. And then it's like, oh, yeah. And I did it with my fake lashes on. Like power to like like power to the girly girls and fight you know kick ass even with fake lashes. Damn. So who is she talking to? You apparently. <laughs> the hater. I mean, I mean, yeah. She, she's telling Macy, right? Oh, of course, her too. No, I'm good for her. Good for her. Oh, you're good. I'm glad. <laughs> okay. I'm glad she's not a Rachel. I'm glad she's not a Rachel. <laughs> Even Good though she part. fights with, they both fight with their lashes on. Yeah. And, well, and one can, can win fights, dirty. right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> exactly. She's fighting. She can do both. Get a girl that can do both. There it is. There you go. That's that's some fucking advice for you fellas. There you go. <laughs> Listen to me. She actually has pretty good advice. I've I've grown as a human because of her, and I'm not at all <laughs> exaggerating this. I'm proud of her for doing that. Good girl. Like before I was hating on her. Big time. She got dirty feet. Why she got chalk all over her? She looked dirty again. Why there's like pure stain on her fucking her chair when she taking a picture with her dog. She nasty. <laughs> talking all kinds of shit. She ain't on Rachel's level. Uh-uh. You wanna be a mom? You need to talk to Rachel. We were talking all kinds of shit. Oh, you were. Okay, okay. I was <laughs> Oh, okay, you and I talk shit about Rachel. Yes, that's right. I talk shit about Loretta on my own. That's right, because you are a mark. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and now I'm like, fuck, she's going all... Like, this is going to be a movement now. It's going to be the fucking fake eyelash movement. <laughs> Cortez. Rachel was the queen bee, but probably not anymore. Oh, man, I hope she's getting a sponsor or something off of this now. She's talking about fake lashes, you know? <laughs> you got that knockout, so do your thing, girl. That is good I marketing. Just, yeah, I just don't want you know. I just don't want to see you fucking making stupid ass dance videos when you're 36 years old. Talking about dropping the beat when you listen to like a <laughs> old ass 60s, 70s fucking song. <laughs> just don't be that, okay? Ooh, I did not expect Holly Holm and uh, hate in this segment, but Jesus Christ, you can work that shit in. <laughs> She said, "When the beat drops, it's an old ass fucking song. The fuck are you talking about? You trying to like connect with the the young kids? <laughs> Your dancing's horrible too. Just stop. Leave Holly alone, Ranger. <laughs> Where everyone's having it rough right now. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's for you, Ash. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I should have known that too. Oh my God. So moving on from that, the last fight that we covered, main event for last week's." fight uh Derek lewis knocked the shit out of alexi olenic in the second round flying knee right hook combo ground and pound i guess we should have seen this coming i did we both go lewis i'm trying to i, I, I did i know i, I did i don't remember if i went for olenic or not or not i think you did Just this one it. i'm i'm legitimately having a hard time <laughs> Remember you were wrong. I no, I honestly don't remember with this one. I remember with uh, with uh, half crossed and all that, but this one I don't remember because I I saw him like he very easily could get submitted. And here's the thing about this, but like this was the prime example of how shit heavyweight MMA is. Derek Lewis and the way I mean, and Alexi Olenek is not the best wrestler, even the best grappler. Obviously, very dangerous, but not the best technically. Took him down with ease. Held him down for a while, and Derek Lewis just powered his way out of that shit. <laughs> yep, just yep. did, just powered his way out of that shit. And then just the fact, obviously, Alexi Olenek lost. He didn't submit him. He didn't look that great against Lewis. But the fact that he could get Ezekiel chokes on like six foot seven men, I mean, come on, dude. Like that's just heavyweight. Like, yeah, this this old forty something year old man with a fucked up ass hairline, <laughs> Ezekiel chokes dudes twenty years younger than him, and then. This fucking fat dude can just power his way out of shit and flying knee and head kick you. It's fucking wild, man. He ain't fat. He's a big bone. 
<laughs> well, he's, trying, he's trying to get in shape, okay? I was going to say, but he's trying to lose weight, so I don't think I'm offending him. I think he'll tell you himself that he's a little big. Yeah, well, I figured he'll throw him around, because especially the first round, he still has a tank. He's still there. So I figured he'd just, like, ragdoll him. There's no way he's going to be able to get his neck. He tried it when they were up against the fence. He really did try it, but he couldn't get around that. That's the thing. Like, I know Derek Lewis isn't as susceptible to submissions as he was earlier in his career, but he still is show- like the improvement is noticeable in the fact that he hasn't gotten submitted in a long time. But as far as when you see him on the mat, like nothing has changed. There's been no discernible difference. Mm, that we can't see. Yeah, Cause... like it's not like he's doing all the like shrimping out of shit and like yeah. doing these technical get ups and using the fence to get up. Like, no, he's just like yeet and just powers his way out and gets back to his feet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he's it. probably able to do that because he's taking better care of himself and not having all these sugar spikes and shit like that. He's eating healthier. That's a good, Mm -hmm. yeah, that's probably a good better. Remember, he had those back problems, too. That's the other crazy part that he could do the shit that he does. He does very Mm -hmm. athletic shit, and he's got a fucked up back. Yeah, probably that all helped, changing his diet, the way he feels inside, all that, because it does make you feel like shit. Once you detox out of sugar, fried foods, and shit like that, you'll start to get more energy. You don't have crashes and shit, so maybe that's something that you know he's he's taken advantage of now because he's eating healthier yeah good uh good observation there so what does this mean wait where do they go from here that's the other thing i don't know what does this all mean in the heavyweight division obviously lewis said he wants to lose some weight before he gets back and with olenic it's like what happens to him like when's enough for olenic I mean, he's still who, dangerous. Yeah, he is, but he's so much older. And but who does Derek fight next? Now he's been at the top. That's so wild. Again, only in heavyweight. Curse blades. Oh fuck. Nah. Yeah, he should just chill. Whatever comes his way, comes his <laughs> way. Just yeah, focus on the weight. If that's what you want to do, if that's what if that's actually what he wants to do. That's not Dana talking to him. That's not his. Co- well, maybe his coach is talking to him, but it seems like it's a personal decision. Like. If I'm going to really kick ass, I got to lose some weight. Yeah, because, I mean, Francis, well, they already had that dance. So who would he fight? Yeah, it would be probably Curtis Blades, I think. That's scary, dude. And shit, I would not be surprised if he knocks him out. And Curtis Blades is a fucking beast, but (laughs) it's heavyweight. Yeah, that would be an interesting one. Again, Curtis Blades is 10 times the fighter that Francis Ngannou is. But Francis Ngannou... That's fucking adamantium for hands, so it doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. Good good win, though. Yay. Yeah, never never a bad thing when Derek Lewis uh, wins. Although the post-fight interview wasn't what we probably expected. It says something about someone taking a shit, but that, that's as wild as it got. <laughs> he didn't, like, give a shout-out to Trump or anything. Yeah, it's a, oh, shit, maybe even he's jumping ship now, you know? It's like, fuck, too much now. <laughs> It's too uh-huh. much, but it is funny because he was fighting a Russian. So yeah, I'm surprised he didn't say USA up in this hole afterwards. <laughs> I know, right? Like, uh, you ain't doing this for Trump. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I know who you're voting for. <laughs> nah, we don't know, man. I don't know. Although Texas is weird this year, Texas is gonna be an interesting one come November. But anyway, we're gonna talk about some other shit later. Don't don't you worry about that. But that does it for the rewind. So let's get into the preview of UFC 252. Before the uh, mention all that, a slight news story that was supposed to happen on this card, on the main card, actually. Jan Kudalaba was supposed to rematch Ankalaev, and that didn't happen because Kudalaba tested positive. That just came in a few days ago, so that fight's been scrapped. So that is no longer in the main card, so they're proceeding with one less fight. Uh, but on the prelims, first fight I want to talk about, Livia Hanata Souza is going to fight Ashley Yoder. And, man, this this should be a fun fight because Olivia Hanata Souza can strike 
She she's got power and she's down to strike, but she's a BJJ black belt, high level. And Ashley Yoder, her nickname is Spider Monkey, and that's exactly how she fights. She's just wild as shit and just scrambly as all hell. So I'm expecting this to be uh who are the guys? Uh Bryce Mitchell and uh what was his name? Rosa? Charles Rosa from a few months back. I, I expect it to look something like that. Man, Susan had a rough go with Brianna, and you thought that it was too soon for Brianna. Yeah, but then that. Brianna but then Brianna fought Torres and look how that turned out. Yeah. I mean we were right and wrong. Yeah. And Ashley, she has fought in a while too, right? Yeah, she fought Randa Marcos last year, I think last October. I mean, yeah, it's been almost a year since she's fought. Damn, both of them. I keep forgetting how pretty Yoder is. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, it's totally random. I'm like looking at her picture. I'm like, oh, wow. Forgot I told you that. Like. Yeah. yeah. I'm like looking at her picture. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, people totally forgot. Me. Yeah, I totally forgot what you look like. It's been so long. I'm just going to go with Sousa. Because I'm not sure, man. A split decision with Ronda. I thought Ronda or Marcos won that fight. Ronda's like that. She wins fights that she should probably lose and she loses fights that she should probably win. It's always like a split decision with her. Mm-hmm. I think she's had like one or two finishes in her UFC career. Everything else is, is decisions and very close ones. And it doesn't matter if it's Gadelia or fucking some new girl that just came in. Like She fights up and down to the level of her opposition. It's odd. But um, I think I have to go with you too. I think I have to go with Souza only because as far as the credentials go, Souza should have her beat on the ground. I'm not counting out Yoder at all because she's so wild in the scrambles that she'll just make shit happen. I don't think she can submit her, but I think she can hang. And standing up, they're both a little rough, but souza has got power and she's a little bit more game. So if Yoder comes in kind of wild rushing in, she could probably clip her and maybe knock her out, knock her out, but possibly drop her and then like choke her, you know? So I'll go with Sousa on that one. We're, bo- we're both going Sousa there. That was the prelims. Now going to the main card, the pay-per-view portion. Jim Miller is going to fight Vince Fischel. Interesting fight because they're both coming off wins to Roosevelt Roberts. Although Vince Fischel was the first man to beat Roosevelt Roberts last year. Jim Miller just beat him like a, what, a month ago mm-hmm. via spectacular armbar. So interesting. Same opponent. Very uh, stark contrast as far as when they last fought and Miller just being this unofficial legend all of a sudden and Vince Michelle is a guy who like everybody forgot about but has always been a pretty dangerous fighter I, I really like this fight that's so interesting um man I think the last two times I think I shit on Jim Miller <laughs> did you? I think I did I don't think so. I know the people that you constantly shit on, and I don't think Miller was ever one of them. Or well, didn't show any interest because I'm like, eh. Well, that I can believe. Yeah. Um. Because yeah, I think I did pick Roberts to win that fight against him. I'm gonna go with Miller. I can't sleep on Miller. He's on. He's that. He's just like means. They're not gonna go away. Hard to put away. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the comparison you made earlier. So yeah, yeah good. Just yep. Stick with him. <laughs> totally get that. And I don't know. Vince Michelle did look very impressive against Roosevelt Roberts. I mean, it wasn't just that. It was a surprise that he beat him. He beat him convincingly, which I didn't think was going to happen. Like I would have been less shocked if he if he finished Roberts that early in his career instead of like clearly outpointing him. So. I don't want to sleep on Pichelle, but it also has been a while since he's fought. And I think Jim Miller, having not taken a lot of damage as of late, having just, you know, I think having, he knows that this, this, uh, this crown is on him, this, you know, unofficial legend type thing. So I think he just wants to continue. I think he just wants to keep adding names to his resume, adding notches to his belt. So yeah, I think he's just going to, Keep on keeping on and probably win like a uh, clear decision over Pichelle. I don't think he'll finish him. I don't know why, but yeah, probably a decision here. So we both got Miller there. Next up, Junior Dos Santos is fighting Jair Rosenstruck. 
Rosenstruck just got knocked out by Francis Ngannou. First loss of his career. Got straight up world starred. And Junior Dos Santos, ironically enough, got uppercutted from fucking hell by Curtis Blades in a fight he really did not look good in. So, on one hand, you got Rosenstruck who got obliterated, what, three months ago? Possibly should not be recovered from that knockout. <laughs> and meanwhile, you got Dos Santos who got knocked out like six, seven months ago, who should probably be recovered, but his time may be over. Dude, this is going to be horrible. Yeah, because he got knocked out by Francis. And then he got knocked out by Curtis Blades. And then now, Rosenstruck? Okay, good luck. This is not going to be an easy fight for him. Dude. See, and then, yeah, you're <laughs> right. They, they both got knocked out by Francis, but Jair got knocked out way fucking worse and way more recently. Yeah, true. But still, Rosenstruck kickboxer fucking so fucking tough i think he he finished everybody except for one opponent when he fought in ryzen yeah he's i think he's finished everybody in the ufc that's for sure and then obviously engano finished him so he's very killer be killed yeah scary dude his first fighter out of Suriname. too bad it wasn't a tower on spawn i think dana didn't want him because he was too good looking I don't know. Um, <laughs> but those Suriname guys are fucking scary as hell, man. Yeah, I think JDS is going to get hurt. That's kind of my gut feeling, too. But here's the thing. Jair, again, just got knocked out three fucking months ago. He got straight up world starred by, by the hardest hitter in the game. Yeah. I can reasonably see, although I think he's a better striker, a better fighter, and better conditioned and in better overall shape than JDS as far as miles on him and whatnot. I can conceivably see that JDS can throw like a jab and a right cross and just knock out Rosenstruck because he's still not all there. His faculties ain't all there from the beating at the hands of Ngannou. You know what I mean? He could legit get knocked out in like 30 seconds again and I wouldn't be surprised because it takes time to recover from that shit. You might not ever be the same. Yeah, true. I'm trying to think of how long it took Overeem to come back after he fucking deaded him. I think it was a while. I could be wrong. But I want to say it was like a good fucking while. True. I don't know, man. Why does JDS look like a porn star? Like <laughs> 60s porn star with that stash. You don't dig it? I thought you like mustaches. Not on him. It doesn't look right. Because <laughs> he's balling with the stash. You got to have like a nice bit of hair to rock the stash. <laughs> yeah, man. Just okay. for that, I'm not picking you. <laughs> Your stash bugs me. Yeah, he's the favorite, of course, because, yeah, former champion. Oh, JDS is the favorite. Yeah. That's yep. a little surprising. But, uh, yeah, then again, I mean, JDS has, he can surprise still, but I think he tends to surprise less than he doesn't. You know, yeah. Like I, we expected him to lose to Blades a bit, but not like that. I mean, uh. he got got his own move used against him. Uppercut was like his bread and butter, and he got fucking deaded by one. By Curtis Blades. He didn't, mm-hmm. like, lay on him at all. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. So, you got Rosenstruck? Yeah, I'm still going to stick with him. I'll go with him, too, but again, if he gets knocked down in 30 seconds, Dude, I, I, I also called it. I'm calling for him, but I called it. That experiment would be over. The Suriname experiment would be over. I'll be I sad. So. I, I mean, hope not. Just keep them around because it's not that that deep in the heavy, di- you know, heavyweight division. <clears throat> necessarily a, a safe bet nowadays, as we'll talk about later. But yeah, I, I think you're right. I hope you're. Yeah, if he does lose, I hope exactly that they that they do keep him around. Next up, we're going to possibly, although it's been very recent that this was announced, possibly scream my. <laughs> my most anticipated fight of this year besides Wiley and Joanna. Wiley and Joanna, I think will be cemented as the best fight of the year and it was the fight I look most forward to but this is probably number two. Marlon Barra <laughs> and Sean O'Malley in case y'all didn't know. No. It's so hard for me to decide. Not for me. 
who the winner is for this. Really? You already got Cheeto, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, no. I'm definitely going for him. And honestly, not even just going with my heart here. I think he could have O'Malley's number. I just, I, I don't think it, I don't know how. I'm not saying this because O'Malley's this good and, and like he can figure out. It's just obviously he's un, unbeaten. Obviously, he's very talented, very athletic, but Cheeto is just, you can't count that guy out, dude. And I don't know. I don't know if O'Malley has that type of heart. Well, we're going to see it Saturday. That's what's so crazy about this fight. It's like, there's no way his heart won't be tested. No, and he's never been finished. Exactly. The guy that is finishing everyone spectacularly early is facing a guy who's never been finished and who's been hurt plenty of times. Brad Pickett fucked his shit up for a few rounds and then he killed him. He gets hurt in like a lot of his fights and then he comes back and kills you. Man, if the Sugar Show continues after this, he's going to be the next... UFC star, I believe, if he can get past Cheeto. But that's such a fucking tough fight, man. There's obviously a lot of comparisons with him and Connor. There kind of always has been. Easy to see, obviously. But this fight really does strike me as kind of like his Nate Diaz moment. Like, yes. yeah. Obviously, when, when Connor fought Nate, uh, fought Nate Diaz, that wasn't seen as some big test because everyone thought Connor would go right through him because Nate was kind of this journeyman and never really beat guys of that high caliber and this and that. But the thing that we noticed after the fight, like this is the one guy that his tricks didn't work. I mean, he, he can last, he's tough as hell and he's not going to get rattled by your shit talk. Sean O'Malley's not like the most diverse prolific shit talker in the world, but obviously he likes to get under people's skin and Cheeto's having no part of this shit, man. He, he, <laughs> I love with his thick ass Ecuadorian accent that my skin is thicker than his mom. Oh my god, that oh mwah, just beautiful. Beautiful, this fucking guy. No words. No words to describe what a sick burn and what a fucking hilarious statement that was. God man. I don't know. I don't know, bro. It's gonna be a draw. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. I hope Cheeto wins, actually. I really do. Because he's been screwed over a couple times in this Well, fight. his last fight. Yeah. like It just sucks that he had to get matched up with Sean. Sean O'Malley. Why? I don't like this fight for him. If you want to make him a star, why go with this one? This is Sink a tough swim. fight. Yeah. Sink or swim. And obviously, well, remember, uh, O'Malley kind of called for this fight, too. True. Because he couldn't get that... Cody fight. I'm going to go with Cheeto too. This might be too soon. I I, I um tweeted somebody else. We were talking about O'Malley and Cheeto. And he was kind of with me that O'Malley's very good, but don't sleep on Cheeto. You know, a lot of people are riding on O'Malley, but Cheeto's the real deal. And I said, he reminds me of uh, Nikki's character in Casino. Joe Pesci's character, Nikki. In one scene of that movie, Robert De Niro says, you know, if, if you uh, if you beat Nicky with fists, he'll come back with a knife. If you beat him with a knife, he'll come with a gun. And if you bring a gun, you better make sure you kill him because he'll keep coming back until one of you is dead. And that's what Chito reminds me of. He's just a fucking maniac. He will never give up. He just doesn't have that in him. He has that killer in him, like legitimately that legit killer in him that he'll... He will do anything and everything to win. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you, you know, he's one of those guys that I guarantee you goes in and like, you're never going to forget a fight against me because I'm going to fucking make you work for it. Yes. God, I love his fighting style. Dude, I'm so excited. I, this is the main event for me. Yeah. I, and I didn't think I'd say that especially with, <laughs> with how much I've been hating Sean O'Malley in the recent past. You know, he, he, I stopped with Quinones. I stopped talking shit with Wineland. The Wineland KO made me a believer. But Cheeto's the wrong dog, man. Definitely. I think people are more talking about this fight. They're talking about this one rather than really the, the main event. Because we didn't really see a whole bunch of content, right? They didn't, like, do a lot of promotion for this. I mean, before you knew it, it's like, here, here you go. It's, we're here, UFC 252. I'm like, what? And maybe because, you know, that's with COVID too, but like they weren't really 
tweeting a lot of content about it, you know, posting a lot of things on IG. It felt weird. Like I forgot that this fight was here already. And it's supposed to be an important fight, but it doesn't feel like an important fight. Yeah. I, I think it is COVID. Uh, again, promotion during quarantine is rough. It's, it's a hard job to do because nothing's guaranteed. Way more than even regular fights during regular times. But I think with Sean O'Malley, I think what people kind of overlook is people like Sean O'Malley and even Masvidal, Connor. The reason that they become popular is obviously they're smart enough to realize that they're big that they have some popularity behind them, but it's also that they help the media out because they do their own promotion. Sean O'Malley with his apparel, with his, you know, his jerseys with his Twitch stuff, with his like, if he was just sitting on his ass and just waiting for the UFC and, and MMA junkie and stuff to do their job for sure, for sure. They're going to want to push this kid because they see star potential, but doing vlogs, doing Twitch stuff, doing, all this type of stuff that he's doing helps him. And he's probably getting fans outside of the the, the typical UFC uh, fans. So he's helping himself. And that really helps him with the media. Because it's like, he's already kind of doing half of our job for us. You know, Connor was doing a lot of that stuff, the vlogs and all that. Uh, the Mac life. And I mean, shit, he got his own site. And then, of course, now with the whiskey, Jorge basically just copied Connor's footsteps with vlogs and liquor and stuff so i i think there's something to be said for that too like the real popular ones they kind of pick up on this yeah with the twitch and everything the youtube channel dude do you see that the throne he was sitting on i, I gotta admit that was cool right <laughs> it's not my style at all it's just the thing with o'malley is like i know there's a bias with me with him because he just looks like every typical suburban white soundcloud rapper and it bugs the shit out of me because i hate that music and i hate that look and i know he kind of is that kind of like that hipster suburb douchebag in a way <laughs> but he's a very smart guy and he's very uh calculated and obviously obsessed with martial arts so it's it's hard for me to it's hard for me to not respect him even if i may not be the biggest fan of his and and with his performances i mean jesus christ how can you not respect the kid yeah such a cool dude I like his style. I did, man, it sucks that he's fighting Cheeto though. Because I want him to be successful. I would love for him to like be that next Connor. But on a different level because he's got the Twitch flat you know, platform. He has YouTube. He's getting into the, you know, his brand, T shirt, jerseys, you know, apparel. He's getting all that. <laughs> without really... really without really even having that huge UFC spotlight. Like Connor did that after he's doing it now before he even gets there. He really will be Gen Z Connor. I mean, Connor yeah. for us, for the millennials, this is for Gen Z. This is like, oh yeah, he's all into video games, all into SoundCloud, all into rainbows and unicorns and shit. <laughs> and that's fine because that's what the youth appeals to. That's he appeals to the youth. Right. And and, and I know that's probably partly of a little bit of my dislike from is like maybe it's just because I'm an old man now. I listen to music, I'm like, fuck this shit. <laughs> you know, like I'm at that age. He smokes weed and knocks people out. Yeah. How it's cool it's is yeah, that? it's like again, it's like every white suburban kid's room, like, fuck yeah, that's what like I wanna be yeah. that badass, you know? And yeah. look as ridiculous as I do. Uh, move over, Michael Phelps. And <laughs> and paint and paint my dog's hair rainbow colors. <laughs> yep. Okay, Funny how no one's talking shit about that. You know, I'm surprised Peter hasn't jumped on this shit. <laughs> That's so cruel. But again, maybe he's just just has that type of charisma where it don't even matter. I was thinking about that too. Like he's so cool and chill. Like he's just gonna walk in there. He's probably gonna knock him out. But I that's that's Cheeto though, man. I mean, oh, anything's I can't possible. Wait. Anything's possible, but it's just hard for me to envision that. Yeah. Not not wait. impossible. Just hard hard to do so yeah. either way both going for chito there but i know you're not gonna be that sad if he loses i i will be I'm not gonna pretend like i'm not mad at that one i'm not gonna be mad i'm not gonna pretend like i'm not gonna be mad if o'malley wins but doesn't mean i won't be impressed especially if he does it spectacularly so co-main event can't wait right there with you main event 
the rubber match between DC and and Miosic. I think this is the first fight since Connor Khabib where everybody's like, I don't fucking know. 50-50. Like you can make good cases either way. I I think I saw as of I think like a week or two ago there was like a pick 'em fight. I don't know what the odds are right now. It's gonna be interesting to see what happens on fight night. But you can really make sound cases for both guys. And it's just nuts with me, particularly with Stipe, because he will have fought DC not just three times, but three times in a row. DC's at least had Derek Lewis. He at least had a break. Miosic has to find new shit to do against an opponent that he lost to and that he already beat and just beat. And it's been three years, 2018, 2019, and 2020. That's all he's fought his past three fights. I don't know. It, it's crazy to think that you can get... Obviously, there's so much at stake here. The greatest heavyweight of all time is what's at stake here. You can't not get up for this, but... I don't know how you can't not be nervous, not be, you know, more than you would be for any normal fight because this really means so much. And with Cormier, last fight ever, according to him. And again, for him, best heavyweight of all time on the line. Yeah, I don't know what's going to happen with this. I just I feel like I want to see DC win so he can just ride this out and retire on top. But I don't think that's going to happen. That's the other thing. DC has a habit of having kind of, I don't want to say this because it sounds like he ain't shit, but he kind of, like John Jones, he kind of choked in the big fights. Now, obviously, he had the big fight against Miosic and won, but if he loses this fight, that kind of might show that it's a bit of a fluke. But then again, I don't know. I mean, he beat Josh Barnett early on in his career when nobody really thought he had a chance. He won the Grand Prix, the Strike Force Grand Prix. <sighs> Even with the Miosic loss, he's still his only losses are really like John Jones. Because if he wins this one, that loss won't even matter. But the John Jones lo- uh, losses will remain. And if he loses, obviously, his losses will be Miosic and John Jones. Like, he'd only lost to two men in his life. But fuck, man. I mean, I, I was thinking, too, that it would be an advantage for DC because it's a smaller cage and he could try to take him down. Because of that, but I was thinking, like, but with Stipe, it doesn't take much either. Like, he has footwork for he, a big and, man. And he can cut tight angles. Remember Verdum? Yes, exactly. He didn't need a 30-foot cage. He could have done that shit, no. like, in the phone booth. Exactly. And fucking going backwards. That footwork. Go ahead and try that in that short cage. Like, I, you might get hurt. That's the thing, too. That type of footwork, like, speed can go athleticism can go but that's just technical footwork like that's not gonna unless he like really he has like a bad knee or something or he fucked up his foot unless he's like injured that's not gonna go anywhere most likely he's still that and then the way he took him out in the last fight was just fundamental boxing body shots jabs stick and move he didn't force anything and then it just came to him and he just fucked him up yeah it's Either way, like, yeah, it's hard. It's going to be a hard one, man. I don't know if it's going to end well for DC. And I hate saying that. I was thinking about it earlier, too. Like, man, I think I'm going to be heartbroken if this man loses. Because I'm going to be so sad for him. Because we've seen him cry. <laughs> a couple times, right? Like, are we going to see him cry again? And Why is it that when anybody else cries, like, you fucking pussy, but when DC cries, like, 80% of MMA fans are like, oh, man, it's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's because DC's one of the few. Honestly, he might. he's one of the very few genuine nice guys in the sport. Yeah. To one extent or another, every fighter's an asshole, you know? like, Or they're just not that charismatic. DC is like, he's kind of like America's dad, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Fuck, man. <laughs> this sucks, man. I mean, I should be, like, going for and rooting for DC because he's up here. But I just feel like this he's not going to be able to finish this out the way he wants to. And I actually watched the Embeddeds and stuff this week. I don't know if you saw this or knew this. And I don't know. Maybe, maybe this will sway your opinion a little bit. But I don't know if you know. Did you know that his wife is pregnant? 
Who, DC's? Yeah. She's like wow. seven. She's like seven and a half months pregnant. Yeah, I didn't finish the embed. It's just the, so, the countdown. Wow. He's, he's been very like cautious with COVID and all that stuff too. Cause obviously he's got a pregnant wife. Like, fuck that. Don't go anywhere or stay here. So obviously <laughs> you can use that either way. Like, has he really been focused because of how the world's been and his family situation? Or is he gonna use his motivation? Like, I got a kid on the way, I gotta I gotta fucking win, you know? Well, I thought that too, because I mean, he's been doing a lot of work, you know, with either Ariel or you know, ESPN and so on. And he's been doing that, wondering when he's actually training. And then Stipe's over here still playing firefighter. Not playing, but he's still a firefighter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. like, what's his schedule like? Is he like twenty four hours on and then twenty four hours off? Because that's how my 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 dad's schedule was when he was a firefighter. Like twenty four well, hours, you're there. Most firefighters, from what I've heard, I think that's their schedule. Right, because you're rotating. You're going in and then rotating out. So I wonder what kind of training has he been getting. Like, it's so crazy to me that he still has his job. I think for that reason, what you just said is probably why I'm actually going to pull the trigger and go for Stipe. Because of that, like, oh, you're right. In this way, they're both distracted, right? And then Stipe just had a daughter recently. He's got like a little one, two-year-old girl. But Stipe has been doing this his whole career. DC has been commentating for two years, three years, maybe? I think so, yeah. So who's been at their routine been doing this longer you know yeah balancing it that's all he's focused on is his family and you know the fight game when it comes up so so what Steve, i'll go with Steve. Steve. it sucks man because i picked dc the past two times you I did think, i think i did I, well i'd have to have you know we have a record of it from last year i have to look back at it but i, think I did emotionally i think i did and that's the last fight I attended. So, yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm definitely most emotionally invested in it, aside from the history aspect of it, of what this means for the UFC, for the division, for both of their legacies. You know, being there is like, fuck, I, I was going hard for DC. And as we said on the show, when that happened, twice I've seen DC fight and twice he's got his ass kicked in the same fucking arena, too. So now we'll see. We'll see how he handles all this weird time. No fans. Obviously, the biggest fight of his career is going to be interesting. It, here's the other thing, too. Like, again, to make it like 50 50, just to, even though I'm still going with Stipe, just another interesting aspect of it. They've basically fought, what, five rounds? Four rounds in the second fight, one round in the last. And both have won two and a half rounds. Yeah. Like, DC won the first two rounds in the rematch and then half a round in the first fight. And then, uh, um, uh, Mielsic won the last two rounds of, the rematch so and he all the way up it was like kind of like especially the first fight was like tit for tat and then he just got dropped and then in the second fight he was he was getting his ass kicked and then he wasn't like fuck dude they can just flip like that yeah he broke down completely <laughs> that is nuts but yeah uh i i don't know if this is a heart pick or a, or my my head but yeah stipe so i i think we're in I think we've agreed on all our picks thus far right yeah i think so I think, yeah this week uh, so that does it for the preview let's get into some headlines paige van zandt it is official she is fight she is assigned with bare knuckle fighting championship multi-fight deal million dollar deal by her account and by most accounts I mean, nobody saw this coming. Even though we talked about it a few weeks ago, it was a rumor or like that would be crazy and it'd probably be like a one-off just to make some a quick buck, but apparently not. I wonder. It, I, I keep on seeing people like, oh, she's for sure going to be the champ. I mean, good for her. She's going to get like easy fights, but unless something dramatic has uh, changed, I think Christine Ferreira is still in bare knuckle and I think she's in her weight, ca- weight class. So I think people just are unaware of her they're yeah they're not aware of her whatsoever and yes she's still with the promotion so i think she called her out too like on is she i think i saw something like a little 
pic on Instagram or something like that. I could be wrong. Nice. I dig it. She's been around for a long time, too. Just not well known. Good for her, I guess. I mean, I'm, they didn't say anything about how much they offered her. Well, you know, multi-fight, million-dollar meal- deal. Yeah. I wonder what else she's getting because it seems like she's going to be the face now. So I wonder what else because, damn, girl, like, you're going to be fighting bare knuckle a couple of times. It's not just the one I was like, you're going a couple of times. And far away, you know, from, from your husband. thought they wanted to travel and be close together. But, damn, they must have really offered her a huge contract. I don't know, too, about her husband. I, I mean, I don't even know who she trains anymore, trains with anymore. But is her husband a striker? I, I thought I don't know much about him because, man, I mean, you got to get some real good boxing coaches in there. I mean, I know you don't have to be super technical, but I, I don't think people have figured out bare knuckle enough thus far. But you got to be smart, smart about this shit if you really want to win. You can't just I mean, yeah, of course, they like to throw down a lot because they're MMA fighters who aren't really technical, but. You can still break your hands a lot, man. You can still get cut up. Go to the body, you know, <laughs> like stick and move. It, it'd be easier. That's what they used to do back in the day when boxing didn't have gloves 100 years ago and shit. Yeah. And I think, was it Feldman? Yeah. I think he said something like, you know, Paige has hands. You know, she's knocked out people before. And I'm like, when did she knock somebody out with her hands? Like, I remember her knocking out Beck. With a rowdy. head kick. Yeah, a rowdy Beck with a head kick. But I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm like, all right. I'm just trying to talk up your girl. She ain't going to be using her legs, man. Yeah, and that's the thing. I mean, she was, what, a dancer? She's very athletic. So it makes sense that she could land some nice kicks. But, yeah, hands, is you got to be coordinated for that shit. Like, really coordinated. <laughs> yeah. I might, I might even pay for this one. <laughs> when it comes up. Depending on who she do it, if she fights for Aya, yeah, I'll pay. I'll fucking pay for that for sure. That's gonna be brutal, and and yes. people are gonna be like, she's gonna whoop this chick. Like, really? Uh, okay. It's gonna be a tough fight. Yeah. Well, good for her, man. She get a lot of money. Well, that, that's kind of what I wanted to ask too. Is like, okay, obviously monetarily, this makes sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's money coming down. Obviously, a big deal. Good for her, as you said, but economically like does this make sense like business wise does this make sense because if she loses that might be it for her because you can't make it in mma you can't make it in bare knuckle what's left for you i don't think you're gonna go with real boxing right and or kickboxing god forbid and this promotion basically they need her they're not gonna they are not known she's more known doing her own thing on her own on social media. So yeah, if she does lose, then now what? Yeah, she's the one with the leverage here. Yeah. Right. I mean, I guess, as she said before the UFC stuff, she made plenty of money on Instagram. I mean, I guess that's the other way she'll go. Yeah, awesome. definitely. See how long that lasts? Things are going wild now. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, good good for Paige. I, I guess we can uh, leave that there. Um, another thing we kind of made a reference to earlier on. So there's been a lot of cuts recently. Uh, uh, Evan Dunham, who's been with the promotion forever. I think he'd even left and come back uh, or retired and came back. Dunham's been cut. Tai Tuivas has been cut. That was a bit of a surprise. Max Roshkov has been cut, who took a fight a few month, a few weeks ago, months ago, I don't remember when it was. He was the guy that basically quit on his stool. A stool, if you don't remember, he was the one that kept on saying like, "I'm done, I'm done." Yeah. And his coach just kept pushing him out there. He got cut. I guess I'm not that surprised with that one, but one I am surprised about. One I'm kind of furious about. You fucking did, Arena. You happy now? I didn't do it. She they did. listen to she's you. The one, she's the one that didn't perform. Yeah, I know Dana listens to me sometimes. Uh huh. But. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah oh yeah all of a sudden take your business seriously dana and he starts yelling at his employees and yeah they have to cut fucking betch cohea betch cohea never got a fair shake man they gave her one title shot she should have been like holly she should have got like 10 of them <laughs> bullshit that's so funny she it got isn't so fair it's, you're right you're right it isn't fair because holly's still with the promotion so you're absolutely <laughs> fucking right this is we should be 
all of us should be outraged. We should all <laughs> sign petitions to to get Holly out of the UFC too, because this is bullshit. I'll get Holly um, out of the UFC if it means Betch comes back. Other than that, no. <laughs> say. Damn it! Just kick them both out. <laughs> how how female empowering of you, Rain? I told you that's the way I empower our chicks, man. I empower everybody like that. Get your shit together, or get out. Clearly, you've empowered Loretta. <laughs> See, she's listening to me too. <laughs> no, but I mean, are you surprised about Betch? Are you surprised? Is she only, I, the honestly, only highlight she has is fighting Ronda's buddies and getting knocked out by Ronda. Honestly, I am a little surprised because kind of what you say, and I know, I know this is like totally, totally different level, but okay, maybe that's not a good example. I'll, I'll retract that. But I think that Ronda connection really went deep. I, I, I really think, and I know that's what I think a lot of people think, like, oh, well, she was on the highlight reel with Holly, with Ronda. People just kind of know her as that goofy chick who kind of gets fucked up. But she had fun fights, and her record really wasn't that bad. I, I find it funny that people think that she is like this, this like losing record, and she's like she won more than she lost, and she was pretty in pretty entertaining fights. It seems like the UFC liked her a little bit. I mean, they didn't weren't giving her like the star treatment or nothing, but it, I never got the feeling that they were trying to cut her, you know, and and. She's never was like on a big losing streak, so yeah, it was it was a little bit of a surprise, uh, just because I thought they kind of had a not a soft spot, but they kind of had, you know, they didn't hate her or anything. But times are tough, and I, I'm kind of surprised there hasn't been more cuts in the past, in the recent past. But I, I, it should make sense, I guess, that there's been all these cuts because they Dana just signed five new uh, fighters with his uh, contender series this week. Well, maybe it's other factors too then, because she's not a draw. She's not known, right? Maybe they looked at other factors too, like social media, things like that. You think they're like yeah. actually doing these deep dives right now? I think so. Or maybe they have endeavors, to. endeavors time. I'm like, all right, you got to think about other stuff other than records. Yeah, I think so. It's a new era, man. It's Business is changing right now, and I think that I think that they probably needed to fill some kind of a quota too. Brazilian bantamweight fighter, like how many do they have? Yeah, uh, Ketlin and the champ, right? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, there's more than that, but just off the top of their head, they need they're, they need some kind of presence down there in Brazil. It's a huge market, so. So with this like contender series coming up, maybe they'll sign more fighters from that region. Who knows? Yeah, one well, they signed a girl this week, very young girl, twenty year old, uh, out of Wales, but I think she was at flyweight, flyweight or possibly strawweight. So it's not like she's replacing her. But yeah, Taito Ivas is another one that kind of surprised me because his record hasn't been great, but he's a heavyweight. Like they need all the bodies they can get there. But then again, yeah. he's he's from New Zealand, or is it? No, yeah, he is from New Zealand, and you know they're COVID free, so. <laughs> Fuck you, man. <laughs> well, actually, that's not even true right now because they just got a few cases again, uh, recently. So oh, not awesome. not anymore. So welcome back, bitches. But anyway, yeah, I'm salty. <laughs> but no, I mean, yeah, you even yeah again with with Ty, like his record wasn't great, and he's a foreigner. He's not American. You know, given the times right now, does it make sense to keep him? Not a great record, not a draw, and he's got to jump through all these hoops just to fight, at least for the near future. And maybe he sees it as a blessing in disguise, too. I mean, it's like, fuck, I don't got to go to America now. Right? Why would you want to come over here? They'll probably resign him again once, you know. Yeah, he can probably, if, if they kind of ease up on some stuff they could probably have some fights in new zealand if they've taken it this seriously and they just want all right we'll open shit up again I'll open up local promote promotions and yeah you could probably get a two or three wins and come back in a year or so mm -hmm. he's still kind of young from what i remember yeah 
And then they love the fighters from New Zealand. So yeah, once everything is settled down, he'll probably be back. Then again, too, maybe doing shoeies during COVID ain't, you know, maybe that's a, a lawsuit waiting to happen. Maybe <laughs> try to cut that, that fucking thread out, too. He's a liability. Huh, they intercepted it before it could happen. They're like, nah. I'm doing the hazmat, too. Like, no, the fuck out of here. Huh, we, we already had Bobby Green, like, spit. Oh, water. yeah, that was not cool. That was not cool. I like Bobby Green, but he fucked up. That was not right, man. I could have that could have been an act of terrorism, Green, and I'm not even joking about that. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, that's horrible. You better Probably. start going around right now and saying how much you love Trump because <laughs> <laughs> you better party your ass. But uh, yeah, anyway, so yeah, recent cuts. Oh, and speaking of the Contender series, yeah, if you guys haven't watched it, I'm sure everybody listening has seen it somehow. Yeah, there was a nasty arm elbow dislocation this week. This guy Joe Pfeiffer. Pretty decent fight. It was only like three minutes in. They're kind of going at it. Gets picked up, slammed, uh, braces with his hand, and totally dislocates his elbow. And it was fucking horrific. It's been making the rounds. But in case you haven't seen it, just look that up. Joe Pfeiffer, Dana White Contender Series. It was pretty gruesome. I hate you for sending me that. Uh, Man, you remember that dude last uh, year in boxing who was fucking knee? Like, that that was horrific. (laughs) That made me scream. This one, I was like, "eh." I wish I would. I wish I would have saved the tweet. Someone tweeted a little bit after that, like, "man, homie, looking like this right now." And it was a picture of a. It was a little video of Woody from Toy Story with his floppy arms, just like hanging it, just like playing with it and shit. Like, oh man, that was cold. I was like, "damn, that's cold, man," but it made me laugh. That's ooh, my elbows hurt thinking about it. (laughs) <laughs> yeah that was wild man he's a big dude too the other guy was like kind of like not scrawny but definitely not physically intimidating this dude was built like a tank and he just picked his ass up and slammed him and that was it and he got a contract i was like nah this was not gonna get a contract it wasn't definitive enough because they were barely getting at it but dana gave him a contract too so weird times out with the old and with the new right yeah that's wild Dana got laid or something. I bet that's that's that vacation. Yeah. He... <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll leave that there to not get into further legal trouble trouble later on the line because I'm sure those lawsuits are coming when we finally hit it big. But, God uh... damn it! We're gonna try to cancel us. Yeah. Oh no, we've already said it. We've already said enough to get us canceled. But you know, I can always go back and try to delete some of this shit. <laughs> what are we doing like the no, cia I... and shit like a burn bag hearing you get all these files just delete delete shift delete shift delete <laughs> i was thinking man like if we ever rebrand are we gonna get rid of everything we ever said we might have to depending on what time and age we get the fuck man getting rid of aunt jemima and fucking try to get rid of trader joe's and all. come on man we're living in a new age and it's not even the people. It's the fucking corporations doing all this shit. So, fuck, if we ever sell out, we're going to have to. Damn, dude. It's the way of the world. Nothing we can yeah. do about it. Maybe you should start erasing shit right now. <laughs> Just kidding. Talk about it after the show. <laughs> oh, so funny. Yeah. Um, speaking of uh, uh, racism and whatnot, uh, there was an interesting story on Bloody Elbow. Julia Budd was going to be fighting Jesse Meal. I believe that's how you pronounce her name, uh, in a few weeks. She, uh, I guess it recently, you know, she lost her belt to Cyborg earlier this year. And um, hadn't seen her since, but she's going to come back in a few weeks. And she thanks attending recent Black Lives Matter rallies for her, like, she feels rejuvenated and she, she feels inspired and she wants to kick ass right now. And uh, in case you guys don't know, Julia Budd is married to a black man and has a black stepson. So it would make sense that this would be an issue near and dear to her heart. Uh, she had some quotes on there and talking about she, something very interesting because, you know, she is Canadian and it's kind of opened my eyes a little bit. Like we have all this uh, as Americans, we have this stereotype. Canadians are all nice and friendly and 
nothing really happens over there because they don't got guns over there and shit. But there's a lot of uh, unjustified murders uh, via cop on on uh, minorities over there. And uh, she said, like, I'm tired of being just slightly better than America. I guess that's the thing that's said in Canada. Like, oh, at least we're not America. But there's still a lot of killings of of uh, of uh, black and indigenous people. So I was like, damn, she's actually standing up. Dude, I had no idea it was bad up there either. I mean, there were some videos coming when when all the protests started. I seen videos of like, yeah, like indigenous people getting beat up by cops and stuff. But I was like, well, maybe this has just been happening recently. Like, I, you know, we're Americans, so we don't talk about other countries. We don't even look into it. But it was, yeah, it was crazy to see that. Like, it's yeah, it isn't just us. It doesn't make me feel any any better about it. It's like. This really might be maybe not a worldwide problem, but maybe a North American problem. Yeah, I guess there was like 2,000 people that showed up for the protest. So that's that's amazing that she was able to, you know, organize this. They have so many people out supporting her and her family. And yeah, I heard the statement by her husband too. I, I don't know if he's Canadian. I I, I I'm not that I'm not sure about, but he was making statements about he's scared that his son, you know, basically scared anytime he walks out of the house because he doesn't know if he'll make it back, which is fucking heartbreaking to hear. But given all the shit that we've learned and seen the past few months, past few years, past few weeks, can't really blame him, you know? Yep, exactly. Just never know, so sad man yeah i mean we, we praised leslie smith a few weeks back for being at oakland and you know fighting with the people and shit and just making her like her life's cause right now but it's different when it's your family's lives on the on, on the line you know right husband and son yeah damn julia so when is she coming back to fight again? I want to say, I want to say it's next week. I think it's August twenty second. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I could get that wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's right. August twenty second, fighting Jesse Meal, who just came into the promotion like a year ago. Decent fighter, not a lot of featherweights out there, but uh, Bellator scoops them all up. So yeah, we'll see. Should be an interesting fight. And I usually I don't really like watching Julia but a fight because she's kind of boring. But I'll definitely root for her in this one. Her story touched me. Right. Um, in other news, your boy, Rain, Yoel Romero, pulled out of his fight with uh, Uriah Hall. Undisclosed injury. No no replacement announced as of yet either. I, I don't understand that. Why? Maybe Izzy's kicks really did hurt him, and now he's just feeling them. You know, That's just funny. Long-term damage. He's not young anymore. That shit is funny. You know, people were saying that on Reddit because they were, like, trying to figure out what happened. Wouldn't it be weird if he had, like, a pulled calf or, like, a like a fucked-up knee or something? You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, people are, like, joking around and saying, like, yeah, it was a bloodbath. That fight with Izzy. He didn't recover. They're, like, talking all, all kinds of shit. I'm surprised he could still walk in after those leg kicks. You never yeah. know. Yeah, who knows, man? He's over here, like, swinging this big-ass hammer with this fucking fucked-up neck. He's still training like a madman, so he maybe he did get hurt. His fucked-up neck? Yeah. He's had, like, like, previous injuries because, you know, wrestling and shit. Mm-hmm. That sometimes bothers him. Like you can kind of tell the way he walks and tries to like turn around and stuff. Oh, I mean, given his, you know, his age and his career in wrestling, I'm not surprised. But I never heard him yeah. actually say anything about it. I think he talked about it. I forgot what interview it was, but yeah, like he's had injuries before, you know. So maybe they're all catching up because of his age. He's not getting whatever substance he needs from Cuba right now because of COVID. I don't know. 
Hey, Cuban doctors are amazing. Right? Like, I don't yeah. know what they do with them guys, but they're a bunch of monsters, man. Even down to the baseball players. Oh, I'm talking shit again. Well, they literally don't feed them. I mean, I don't know if you remember st- talks on Joe Rogan that you literally eat better the better you do training in the Olympics and in athletics and shit. Ironic how communist countries use capitalism to motivate their athletes, but anyway. Yeah, plus he like did that backflip too. Remember before the Izzy shit? Backflip? It could have been that too. Yeah, yeah. yeah maybe right. he pulled something, and then now he's feeling it. I don't know, man. Again, long term damage. I'm making all kinds of excuses for my for my man, Yoel. <laughs> we'll I thought see. it would have been a bad fight for Hall, anyways, but. Yeah, I mean, obviously, bullshit aside, if Yoel pulls out, there's got to be something pretty serious. Especially that, yeah, I mean, it didn't seem like he took a lot of damage against Izzy. And no. Uriah Hall seemed like a bit of a winnable fight for him. So, And it's a fight that people wanted to see. So, yeah. Yeah, so we'll see. Undisclosed injury. So maybe it'll come out. Maybe he's got COVID. Again, that happens because they don't have to say. It could be COVID. Um. We'll see. We'll see. Hopefully he's good. Hopefully it's nothing too serious. In other news, I guess since we're talking about middleweights, we could talk about another guy. We were talking earlier about him. Luke Rockhold has come back into the spotlight. Um, he was talking shit about Chris Weidman because obviously Chris Weidman won his last fight and didn't look that good. And he didn't mince words. He said he looked pathetic. He said he wasn't impressed at all. That they look like two heavyweights fighting and two sloppy, low tier heavyweights, which I I cannot disagree with the word of that. He's absolutely right about that. It was not a good fight, not a good performance by Weidman. But then he really lost me because he's talking. Well, okay, I'm I'm considering coming back to fighting. I guess I'm not retired, but I got to pick the lesser of two evils if I'm gonna fight. I don't want to fight an apex sparring in front of like ten people. So I'd rather go to Fight Island. Because it seems like more adventurous. And that might be worth my time against Chris. What? What a douche. <laughs> and like, man, clearly Luke has never heard the say, the phrase that beggars can't be choosers. Right. Like, yeah. how many fights has he lost recently? He got knocked the fuck out by Jan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did he forget? He must have forgot. Because it was so bad. His, his jaw broke, remember? Yep. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah, you were laughing because he couldn't talk. <laughs> now that it's healed up, look at him. Talking hey, a, a long time without talking. You, <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta let it out. If Angela Hill can't even make it to Fight Island, you're definitely not going to Fight Island. They're not paying for that shit. Well, you know, maybe it's an issue of timing. Maybe shit gets real bad out here. They got to go back, and that's around the time he wants to fight. Maybe he does go. But, yeah, I mean, if I was Dana, I'd be like, yeah, we're either getting you in sooner or later because I don't want you getting in right when we're supposed to leave. I'm not booking you around the Israel Adesanya card. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because that's supposed to be over there. And then, of course, God forbid, if like Borachina pulls out, he's probably going to be next in line to fight this Oh, year. God. You know, you, especially during COVID, man. You never know. Although I would love to see Israel just smash Luke. That'd be fun. God. That would, be, that would be fun to watch. But... I don't want to hear Luke. Please shut up. You're so good looking, but just when you open your mouth, just stop. But what's all this bullshit I hear with you women saying that we we like guys to talk to us and we you know we want to communicate with men and all this? What what are you saying now, Rain? He's not communicating. <laughs> He's talking about himself. Oh. Well, that's talking, right? Or, or you just want us to talk about you. That's, that's, not, that's not communicating, though. <laughs> you're talking about yourself. That's all you're doing. Uh, you're not trying to have a conversation. 
You can't have a conversation. <laughs> never enough. Can never figure you out. <laughs> so complicated. Uh, I feel for you, Luke. No, not really. But it is kind of <laughs> you're on your usual bullshit. Yeah. Same old shit. Yeah. So moving on from that, our last headline. So there's a weird controversy that happened a few weeks ago with the Edmund Shabazian fight when he lost to Derek Brunson. He came out with what I thought was an Armenian flag because I know the Armenian flag very well. Um, it had the colors, it had the pattern, but it did have this weird design on it, this weird like arrow looking thing on it. I I didn't know what it meant. I, I just figured it was like some weird take on the Armenian flag. And apparently it's a separatist flag of a certain minority in uh, in Azerbaijan. And I'm trying to remember the shit. I thought I had it here. I think it's Os- Oskart. Try- I apologize. It's a kind of a difficult name to pronounce. But anyway... There's a Armenian minority in Azerbaijan and they're fighting for their land, their perceived land, however you want to say it. I, I don't know too much of the history of it, but I do know that Armenians have a bad history with getting shit taken from them. That's kind of been the, their history. And um, they weren't supposed to do that because apparently now all of a sudden they only honor internationally recognized countries with their official flags and that's not one of them so the UFC actually had to fire some 20 year old kid who was supposed to be in charge of this and they had to issue an apology because Azerbaijan and I guess Turkey was upset by this and it brings up a lot of questions and a lot of uh, ethics regarding nationalities and ethnic minorities around the world that quite frankly a lot of Americans don't even really know of, I mean, I'm not even too sure of this. Uh, I'm not too aware of this history in this part of the world, but I do know a little bit about Armenian history. And I do know that they've been fucked over quite a few times. I was trying to take shit, man. I'm trying to take shit again. Um, What bothers me is that like the UFC has made what they basically do. What? What's the word I'm trying to, to think of I'm like kind of half cherry asleep pick. right now yeah they cherry pick who gets to do what i guess there is a policy that yeah you have to only have like you know flags that are recognized but why are other people getting special treatment that that's what bothers me and then this kid getting fired because he didn't know well how can you know what's going on like you said earlier like we only like care about what's going on here. We got so much going on here. Like he's supposed to investigate this 20 year old kid is supposed to investigate every fucking flag. And if there's potential issue or not, that bothers me a lot. Yeah. Um, why, why don't they reprimand Edmund too? Then if that's the case, he's the one that walked out with it. Right. Well, that's the thing. Edmund most likely didn't know about it. I mean, obviously he knows the background of the flag. Obviously he wanted to represent, but he was probably not aware that the policy was that they can only uh, um, rep internationally recognized countries. You know, I was like, well, that's a part of the world. That's part of my country, technically. So I'll, I'll rep that. But yeah, he probably wasn't even aware of it. But here's the thing, just for a little background of people who may not know. I, I say this as, as someone who's known plenty of Armenians. I don't know many like personally to know like the deep history but i do know this how we talked a few weeks ago about cubans being republican because of their background in uh in cuba there is a strong anti-obama sentiment a few years ago when obama was our president by the armenian community because it's been what over 100 years since the armenian genocide and no president has ever recognized it obama either and he was the guy that everyone was looking to. Is like he's he's the humanitarian. He's the guy that you know he wants to help the oppressed people and this and that. And like every other president before him and since then, he has kowtowed to Turkey because he, they're one of our few allies in that country. Turkey's the one responsible for those atrocities. Armenians 
will never forgive the Turkish people from what I've seen, just like Jews will not forget Ger- forgive Germans it, on that type of level for what they did. And to this day, um, and no Western country, I don't think it's just the U.S., no Western country has recognized uh, the Armenian genocide. They, they will call it an atrocity. They will not call it a genocide. Yeah, and I think, I'm not going to say a lot of us, but I think people, some people are aware of it because the Kardashians, which is sad. No, you, you know what? That sounds bad, but it's something. It is Better than something. nobody knowing, yeah. I know it is something, but it's like, I just hate the fact that, again, it's for ratings and shit. They went all the way over there. You know, they visited, like, I guess they visited, you know, visited their family, too, because they just happened to be there. So, yeah. So, yeah, people know about Armenia because of them. But they don't know what really happened. I know, I'm trying not to talk about my family history, too, because, yeah, uh, the background is Armenia. Yes. My, you know, my grandfather got here. My great you know, grandfather got here. Great great grandfather got here. Yes, um I'm I'm sure I don't think we've ever talked about that too much, but yeah, you are a part of me. I know you bring it up sometimes with Kaylin Shakagian. You're rep you know, you're down with her because she's Armenian. But uh yeah, but it's not just Armenia too, Reen. I mean you're Okinawan. You do not call yourself Japanese and that's for a reason. Yep. Yep. Gosh. Try to take shit from us too. And use us as a stepping stone. Half my family and my people's almost killed off. So yeah. It I mean, there is an Okinawan flag, right? Whether it's Yes. Yes. So in this case, you know, you are an immigrant, so I guess America's not exactly your nationality, you know, it's not your nationality. So if you're a UFC fighter. I guess what Japan? That's what you'd have to rep. I wouldn't. Hell no. I know you wouldn't. Not that far. But, but you can't rep Okinawa or Armenia. Well, Armenia you could, but obviously, here's the other thing about Armenia that's kind of wild for for you guys. Just to give a little background with this too, I wasn't aware of this till very recently. Apparently, there's like it's very hard to find a native Armenian. There's plenty of Armenians around where I live in Southern California, especially here in Glendale, but nobody really comes from Armenia from what I've heard. It's not like they live in Armenia and they came to America. They probably lived in Armenia as kids, then they had to flee to Lebanon or Russia or some neighboring country, and then from there, Syria, and then from there, they came to America. They almost always know some type of other language, even if it's poorly because they had to live elsewhere. So they're immigrants before they're even immigrants here. Like they kind of are a people without a land because they've been in so many conflicts. So many of them are like, don't know their homeland that well. It, it's pretty fucking sad, man. It, it's the, the history of the Armenian people is just crazy. Like I know they're not a big minority here in the States, but if you know something about them, they've had a very fucked up and interesting history. I don't. I don't understand the whole denial of it. Like Politics. You see, yeah, like there's lost people. Yeah, you know, but then again, we're not recognizing Pal- Palestine in this either. I mean, Luke Thomas made a tweet earlier this week, uh, earlier today, and some guy. I have no idea who this person was, but talking mad shit of how dare you acknowledge these animals that they're not even a real people, and you know. That we're going to take their land over too. I, I have no idea where this p- person was from. I don't know if he was Israeli or I, I don't know what he was, but the, the dehumanizing language about acknowledging the Palestinian people is like, fuck. And that's again, Palestine's probably the best example. It is not an internationally known country, but it's been there way before us. It had a history way before 1940, you know, 45, 48, whenever the, Israel uh, thing took down and yeah, probably couldn't rep that either. Or unless Dana's just in a good mood and says, fuck it, you can. It's fucked up, man. People's people's background is their background. I don't know how you can pick and choose that. I don't get it either. And just 
have some, what is it? Um, so it wasn't a prime minister. Who was it? Did somebody from the consulate write yes. a letter to Dana and like complain? Yeah. Yep. It was, yeah. It was like from the higher ups, like get this shit off my TV. Yeah. After the fact too. <laughs> yeah. Like, what does that tell you? Like, cannot, geez. cannot give them humanity. Cannot give them agency. That's mm-hmm. what that means. Yeah. Horrendous shit. Horrendous shit. So yeah, we try to have fun here, but these type of stories pop up and I found it very interesting because again, I'm fascinated with history and that is a history that not a lot of people know about. So sorry about that folks, but we got to talk about this shit sometimes, but enough about headlines. Let's get into some matchups. <laughs> fight that you're going to love rain, Brandon Moreno. So we'll fight. You tell me about Brandon Moreno is going to fight Alex Perez at UFC 255 in November, November 21st, which is ironically on the prelims on the undercard of Cody Garbrandt and Davidson Figueredo. Damn, they hate him. They hate Moreno. Why they do him like that? On the same card? That's fucked up, man. I mean, he had no choice but to take another fight. But on the same one, you assholes. Why you gotta rub it in like that? I I wonder, actually, now that I think about it, I wonder if they did this as insurance. Because we have no proof that Cody Garbrandt can make flyweight. It's possible. You that's a good point, actually. But at the same time, Moreno is gonna be training for Alex Perez, not for Davison Figueredo. And if he gets done dirty, he gets done dirty, and then that's that's the end of that. You just got knocked the fuck out by Davison Figueredo, a man who you're not training for, even though you should have. Right. Yeah. That's a fucked up setup, man. <laughs> I mean, I guess uh, I'm we're not the biggest Cody fans on here, but even I feel bad saying this. Like, I guess base case scenario in this case would be Cody gets hurt a few weeks out. That way they replace him with a few weeks notice. You know what I mean? Like, I guess that'd be some kind of justice, but still not ideal. No. No. But- I know that, yeah, it's November. He has time, but that's not right. He's preparing for somebody else. Oh, here you go, but, number two. There you go. There's your opportunity now, number two. What kind of bullshit is that? Like fucking handout? <laughs> that can't. You can't feel good. That can't be right. Uh uh-uh. uh Hey, but if you win, you win. And as somebody, and a lot of people online are saying, like, hey, if he beats Figueredo, he'll do something TJ couldn't. Doesn't matter. He lost to him twice. Suck it, TJ. Two division champ. God. What if he doesn't make weight? You're right, man. If he doesn't make weight, I'm going to laugh. And it's one of those things like, fuck, can you even, I mean, obviously you need to prepare very well, but shit happens. It's a weight you've never done. A a gigantic fight. (laughs) Damn, his hate for TJ is so deep. And the fact that the UFC would just go with it. Like, I understand he's, he's pretty popular. So, yeah, they are kind of right when they say that. This can help Figueredo in the division, but yeah, I mean they they know what's up. They know that this is a, a you know they they know that this is kind of the the motivation. Yeah, of course. Stick it to TJ. Let that chapter go, man. It's so crazy to me. Like he's still chasing that. It's so wild. You know he'll probably shout that out too afterwards he probably will he probably will look at me now tj you know because shouldn't tj be coming back next year sounds about right like january february or so probably yeah, probably yeah two years. if he gets the belt in november and... and then oh my god are they gonna fight at flyway the rubber match at flyway and then tj whoops his ass there god. oh fuck this team alpha male th- this I, maybe that's why I don't like Team Alpha Male. It, maybe it's nothing personal. It's the fact that like they ruled WEC, which I understand they're good fighters, but they come into the UFC and still Uriah getting all these title shots, TJ getting all these title shots, Cody getting all these title shots. Benavi- it's like I don't have anything against them personally, really. It was like fuck, all you guys always Chad Mendes, you know. It's like, that's why Feely's cool because he won one, lost one, won one, lost one, and now he's he's earning his way up, you know. There was no favoritism going on there. Yeah. 
No offense, Reen. I know they're, they're your sack boys, but that, yeah. No, that's, man. That's, it's, that's it's hard not to talk about them. Yeah, exactly. You know, <laughs> it's, it's hard point. not to. <laughs> it's like, I got to keep it real, too. Like, I don't know about that team sometimes. <laughs> well, it's funny because you kind of have this thing against Jackson Wink. But it is kind of the same thing with them too, you know. It's just that they're yes. <laughs> I told you I'm an equal opportunity hater. It's just I have to see some of those people. I, I get you. back to the gym. So <laughs> right. I'm like, oh shit. I get you. And That's you know, why I don't I try not to do, talk about it too much, only because it'll be awkward for you. So I get it. In another fight, Viviana Araujo's back and she's replacing Marina Morose, who I Constantly forget it's still on the roster. I think we talked about this fight a few weeks ago that she was going to fight Montana, Montana De La Rosa on September 5th. But Vivian Araujo stepped in. I don't know why Morose uh, uh, is being replaced. I don't know if I actually read that far into it now that I think about it. And I thought that Vivian Araujo had gotten COVID. So this would be a wild turn of events that someone gets pulled and is being replaced with someone who recently had COVID. Although don't quote me on that. I don't quite remember if that was why she had been pulled initially. I don't know either. I'm trying to look it up on why. Cause she was supposed to fight Jojo, right? That's what Jennifer Maya. Oh no, I'm sorry. She was supposed to fight Jennifer Maya and Jojo replaced her just recently. Mm-hmm. And I want to say it was because of COVID, although I could be wrong. Again, she's Brazilian, so I kind of assume that. But I know we've been fired up about all those fights, and now somehow she's coming back here. Interesting turn of events. Even Reddit doesn't have anything on that. That's wild. Yeah, nobody really knows what's going on. Because huh? <laughs> Reddit usually... Yeah. Yeah, they know. That's the Bible there. Okay. Wow. So what do, what do you think of this fight? I like this fight better, actually. Yeah. This is going to be an interesting fight. I like this fight. Yeah, Raujo obviously got hands, got mm-hmm. good ground game, too. So if they go to the ground, Montana, I mean, she's right there for her. But Montana's been getting pretty good. I mean, what, she dropped, uh, what was her name? Um. The guy, the one I was, Mara Romero Borello, always fucking forget her name. She dropped her in her last fight. She looked better than ever. So uh, this will be interesting if they got hands to match their ground game. Could mm-hmm. be fun whether they're on, they're on the feet or on the ground. Good fight. I like it. Uh, two gigantic fights to round this out. Colby Covington and Tyron Woodley. It looks like they're in verbal agreement. It's supposed to take place at an event September 19th. So amazingly, this will not be on a pay-per-view, which I'm very what? surprised by. Yeah, it doesn't look like that's going to be a pay-per-view. What? No way. How's Willie going to get paid? No Will- way. He's not going to take that fight, right? Unless he gets paid. Willie? Right? Oh, Come Woodley. On. Oh, I don't know why I heard you say Willie. I was like, Willie? No, Woodley. He ain't uh, taking that fight. Well, the, Gil- the Gilbert Burns fight wasn't on pay-per-view either, and he got his ass whooped for nothing. Well, not for nothing, but you know what I mean? But this fight? With Colby? Yeah. I would be going after that money. Wouldn't you? Or is that a dead topic? What? Colby, what? Colby and Col- Woodley, like, is that something still there? I think it's one of these scenarios where I don't think a lot of people care about Kobe right now. I don't think a lot of people people care about Woodley right now. But put them both together, they're going to draw interest. But this is not like last year. This is not the talk of the town as it was a year or two ago. That was like everybody wanted to see that fight. Mm, okay, so that's all died down. So fuck, man. That means we're going to have to hear Woodley rap some more because he's not getting paid. You think he's going to continue with that shit? He needs to get paid, right? Doesn't he have like a spending problem or something? I hope he cut he cut that shit down. And actually, I just looked it up. I guess September 19th is a UFC 253, so my apologies. So it's going to okay. be it is going to be a pay-per-view, but that's supposed to be the Adesanya 
but a china fight so probably oh, on the oh. undercard yeah interesting to go to fight island damn yeah that's a pretty good deal for the forgotten <laughs> <laughs> seriously like they were like the, the fight we wanted to see at one point and then now it's like over with <laughs> like they're going back and forth for so long with that shit and then yeah we got the Usman fight which I'm not complaining about that was a good fight that was a great fight yeah let's let's see what happens with Kobe I mean honestly bullshit aside I know that the whole thing, he came up with his persona to get fights, to get money and this and that. We all know that, but it's not just a persona. He really did get more, more exciting as this persona came about. You know, he started the trash talk and the, the anting up of the persona with Maya. But that was a pretty spectacular ass whooping he laid on Maya too. He wasn't like the boring wrestler he was before that. At least I don't think so. Mm-mm. So, got to give him credit for that. It's not just the the people are interested for his politics and his sh- trash talking and all that. He did become a better fighter and a more exciting fighter. So, there's that. We'll see what happens. And uh, one of the biggest news stories this uh, this past week, Jeff Neal was supposed to fight Neil Magny. We talked about it, I swear, last week. And as soon as we talked about it, it looked like Jeff Neal... Uh, had to had to pull out because he nearly died. He, I, I still I've looked everywhere to see what happened. I I don't know what happened. I heard something about sepsis and dialysis. He he got really really fucking sick. Said he felt great. He had no issues. Doesn't have COVID. Doesn't have the flu. But he got real sick and is in dialysis. So he had to pull out. And Robbie Lawler's taking his place against Neil Magny. So, <sighs> I've never heard such bad news and such good news in the same statement regarding MMA. Damn, dude. I was so excited for that Jeff Neal fight. But how can you not be excited for Lawler and Magny? I mean... I'm I'm so excited to see Lawler fight again, but damn. Just, oh, yeah, of course. Man. You you can't take <laughs> away the, you know, the fucking tragedy of, Neil, of, uh, sorry, of Jeff Neal. Fuck, dude. You know what we were talking about? Just what... Was it with the Mike Perry fight that he had just quit his day job? Mm-hmm. You know, yep. like he's barely getting on track, like coming a professional fighter. This was supposed to be a gigantic fight. And then this shit happens to him. And you got to wonder, I mean, I don't, knock on wood, I like the guy and I don't wish him what, bad. But if this is serious enough that this might really fuck with his career. I hope not because he was coming up, man. And good timing that he like quit. That job too. Well, that he, he would need it. He wouldn't have really had a choice now, would he? Have? Yeah, he was a waiter. Right. Exactly. So I hope he's yeah. I hope he gets better. Whatever it is, I, I was trying to look for it on Reddit too. Like nothing. Did searches everywhere. You brought up something very interesting off air when I initially mentioned this to you. They. There is a possibility, although he did test not negative for COVID. What if he had had COVID like early on? What if he got it like in March or April and just went undetected and you never know? Maybe this caused some some issues. It's possible. That'd be crazy. If, like I wonder if he's taken an antibodies test. Maybe that would tell us a lot. I don't know because we had what two fighters that fainted about that. Mm-hmm. I mean, still about, don't know. Yeah, we don't know what's going on with fighters that had it before, or try to get testing but couldn't. Like you know, Ronda. Yeah, we Marcos. talked about that too. Yeah, Ronda Marco. She went to Brazil in the empty arena and said that she felt woozy and felt like she might have flu-like symptoms. Never got a word as to whether she got a test. She got sick, t- positive, negative, nothing. Nope, nothing, nothing. So I don't know, man. So, all this. Weird shit is happening. Never Scary, know. It can, be, it can be something else. You never know. You never know what's on the horizon either. Yeah. It's a wild fucking time. Wild time. So positive thoughts, good vibes towards Jeff Neal. Hope you get better. Hope this just, you can get healthy, get back in training camp, and this will be in the rear view. 
And if you don't, wish you all the best, man. I just hope you have a healthy life at the very least. You know, we're fans, but got to think of the, the human too. That does it for the matchups. That does it for MMA. We're going to get into our new story of the week. Headline is Wisconsin State Agency requires employees to wear a mask while teleconferencing. So, yeah, this is a, <laughs> yeah, this is a, Obviously, state agency in Wisconsin doing some kind of Zoom meeting online, video chat. And uh, yeah, they want them to wear masks because they want them to set an example that because they are in the state, they are in the government, they are responsible. And uh, they want fellow citizens, fellow Wisconsiners, Wisconsinites, don't know the proper term, uh, to follow suit. I. I don't know what it's been in the past few weeks. I guess we should have seen this coming that, y- you know, there was a whole thing. We've, we've talked about this during off air. It's either, you know, team mask or team go fuck your mother. And now it's like, even team mask is going a little fucking crazy, man. This is so fucking stupid. What's the point of teleconferencing then? Exactly. It's like, if anything, it should make you more paranoid, right? Like shit, they're wearing masks, even though they're away from each other. Mm-hmm. Should they just be in the building working together? If you want to set an example, don't you want people back in the economy and working? Why don't you go back to the office then? I, I think we talked about this. Um, I think we talked about this on air a few weeks ago about Britney Spears. There, the um, She was wearing a mask with her boyfriend on a boat. And people were kind of commenting, like, why would you be doing that? You're out, you know, you're not near people. And they said that we just want to set a good example because we have a lot of followers and stuff. Like, that makes sense to me, especially it was like a few months ago when this was kind of new. But this, like, everybody knows now, man. Fucking idiots. I mean, if they want to set an example, maybe they should talk about health and how you should take care of yourself. As well as, of course, yes, wear a mask, but let's think about our health as well. What we're eating, what we're doing. Get out for 20 minutes, go outside. Maybe 15 minutes, that's all you really need. Get some vitamin D. Are we going, to the, this. Are we going the full Joe Rogan thing? And we're not talking about health instead of just the, fact, the fucking mask wearing and the lockdown and all that? Yeah, like maybe like an all different, like nobody talks about this. And you and I talked about it too, right? Like what can we do at home? Yeah, little things, right? I mean, people should definitely not look just towards the government for the answers because clearly they don't fucking have them or they don't care. So the onus is on us a bit. Right. They just say, wear a mask and that's it. What? That's it? That's all you got? You have nothing else for us. You don't know anything else, what we should be taking, what foods we should be eating. None of that. Just wear a mask. So fucking stupid. I don't it's, understand it at all. It's shit like this that drives me crazy, man. Cause it's like, even shit like this, I'm an essential worker. So I've been wearing masks for the past couple fucking months. It's no big deal to me. I don't care. But it's shit like this that drives me crazy because I think it has the opposite effect. People are just like, man, fuck you and your mask. I've worn this shit long enough. I'm tired of this shit. I mean, you look fucking stupid. You look silly. We're on a Zoom call. You're ridiculous, man. You're doing nothing. You're actually doing the opposite. People are laughing at you. You're not taking you seriously. To me, it's almost like you're you're like being sarcastic. Like you're being an asshole. (laughs) Oh, you want me to wear a mask? Yeah, let me just wear this fucking mask everywhere I go. Like you're what? Yeah, I, I can definitely see how you can get that interpretation. Do something else. Send, I don't know. Make a video on how to be healthy if you want to spread awareness and shit. Jesus, don't be stupid on a Zoom call. You might as well be in the office. Go fucking back in the office and work. Am I right? Like, you're at work with the mask on. Why can't they be at work with the mask on then? Well, yeah, the, the, the fucking hypocrisy with the government's been hilarious. Open up businesses, open up this and that, but state buildings are closed. Museums right. are closed. You know, like, don't go where we're at. Right. You go ahead about your business, open schools, this and that. But we're nice and comfy and safe over here. No White House tours. Last I checked. Yeah. Want to set an example? Sure. Then go back to work. 
<laughs> Shit, whether they've been working or not, they've still been getting a paycheck. Right. How many people exactly. in this country can say that? I know. I wonder if they got um, either furloughed or pay cuts like we did in California. Oh, no, not not uh, not state agencies, not government officials. No, Absolutely. not official government people. No, fuck no. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You'd have you'd have to murder somebody to lose your position. But then again, if you're like the president or whoever, you can do whatever you want. So I don't want to say I'll give Trump credit, but it is kind of wild that one of the most outlandish statements he made was actually true. I could shoot somebody in the street and I would lose no support. Mm-hmm. It's crazy that he said that early on before he got elected. And it has remained true throughout four years. That's so scary, man. That's fucking wild. That's so scary, man. It 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 was funny to me then. It's less funny now, but it's still fucking funny because it's like, fuck. When you're right, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> fuck, man. It's like, of all the things, you've lied and said so much shit about so much things, but the one thing you're right on, that. <laughs> yep, those fucking women with those shirts on. Grab my pussy, Mr. President. You can oh, grab I- mine. Did I? Oh, when was this? Was this back then? During the, during the protests. Holy shit! Oh yeah. my! Do you have pictures? I want pictures of these women. They must be fucking insane. You I need to see it. Them. It's like during the the well, there was protests going on, but he had that rally in Oklahoma and another area too, I think. And then <laughs> yeah, they had like or Trump camp, some kind of supporting like gathering or something, and oh they had God. shirts like that. This lady was huge. And she had a shirt on that That said, you can grab my pussy. Uh, These are his, his base. These are the people that support him. Yeah. That is nuts. That is They live, they live amongst (laughs) us and they call us animals. That is fucking great, man. That is fucking amazing. (laughs) I want to tell my dad about that one. I should find that one and be like, this is. I really need to see this picture. How have you not shown me this before, Rain? You know how much I love this bullshit. I don't know why I didn't. Maybe (laughs) because I was just too disgusted. I'm like, are you fucking serious? Like, she she got a shirt made that said, you can grab my pussy, Mr. President. Oh, man. You can grab me in the pussy. Like, they're okay with that. They're okay with shit like that. It's cool. You're racist. You can get felt up, whatever. Wet ass pussy though. No. Yeah, you wet ass pussy? No, that's wrong. Oh my god. We bring this shit back around, man. <laughs> Talking about my pussy, that's fine. Wet ass pussy by these uh people of color. Fuck <laughs> man. White pussy good. Color pussy bad. <laughs> Don't make me go down that road. <laughs> I did not think we would end it this way. I did not think we would come full circle, but God damn it. Shit's just poetic sometimes. So there's no better way to end this. There's no better way to call this a night. Cause it's been a fucking long one. So I'll just stop it here. So thank you guys as always for listening. Uh, you can find us everywhere. Podcasts are iTunes, uh, Spotify, SoundCloud on all those platforms. Google us. You'll find us. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at juice underscore MMA. Reen. Fox with you on Instagram and Twitter. And you can follow the podcast at iFox with Juice also on Twitter and Instagram. So thank you again for uh, for being here, for joining us, for uh, <laughs> sticking through all this bullshit. And, uh, oh, we hope we have a better show next week, although I love the way it started. I love the way it ended. It's going to be hard to outdo. We'll try. We're here for you guys. So thanks again. Later. Bye, pussy. I'm kidding. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> See ya.